Our planet may be called Earth, but its surface is made up mostly of water. Water flows within us and is the driving force that unites all nature. Water is food, prosperity, energy, life. Yet today, too many people go without it, while others take it for granted. Care for water, cultivate a sustainable future. Water is life, water is food. Honoured members of Parliament, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Mr. Speaker, who could not be here with us today, I welcome you to the Maltese Parliament. This morning we have gathered together at the Parliament of Malta to commemorate the 78th anniversary since the foundation of the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, a specialized agency of the United Nations organization. This organization supports governments to design policies and formulate programs intended to end hunger and malnutrition, promote food security, and sustainable agriculture for people worldwide. In its report of July 2022, the World Health Organization held that a number of people affected by hunger globally rose to 828 million, an increase of about 46 million since 2020. Furthermore, nearly 924 million people, equivalent to 11.7% of the global population, faced food insecurity at severe levels, an increase of 207 million in two years. The WHO also reports that over 3 billion, almost half of the global population, cannot afford a healthy diet, reflecting the effects of inflation in consumer food prices stemming from economic impacts and regional conflicts in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. The effects upon children are devastating, with 149 million children under the age of five years had stunted growth and development due to chronic lack of essential nutrients in their diets. This implies that two in three children are not fed in the minimum diverse diet they need to grow and develop in their full potential. Fow and Hu forecast that nearly 670 million or 8% of the world population will still be facing hunger in 2030, even if a global economic recovery is taken into consideration. <laughs> the International Fund for Agricultural Development admits that these are highly depressing figures for humanity, with UNICEF calling the situation as catastrophic, with so many children's lives and their future at stake. Who called up upon the international community to fight hunger and malnutrition and undertake action to ensure that food is a source of health for all. Malnutrition is a truly universal problem. The overwhelming majority of the world's hungry people reside in the developing world, where extreme poverty and lack of access to nutritious food often leads to famine and death. People in extreme poverty conditions at home flee their own countries to seek refuge and earn a better living in affluent countries, namely in Europe and North America. Nationals of poor and undeveloped countries cannot desert their own countries and people. They have a duty towards fellow countrymen and women in efforts intended to improve the living conditions. That obligation can only be fulfilled through activism in politics and actively contributing towards the economic, social and humanitarian and political development and well-being of their families and people. The way forward, in my opinion, is a collaborative, wide-ranging international effort intended to assist nationals of developing countries to earn the required resources, including skills and know-how, and to enable them to improve the living conditions and the livelihood of their own nationals. FAUMAIN's team to this year's World Food Day also focuses on the scarcity of water, Scarcity of water resources worldwide 
and the importance of water resources to food production. Water resources render parcel of lands, areas edible, fruitful, and productive. On the other hand, arid land areas are unfit for any type of cultivation and for human settlement. UNICEF reports that 884 million people lack access to drinking water, and 2.3 billion do not have access to lavatories or other basic sanitation facilities. Contaminated water and poor sanitation are among the leading causes of death for children under five years. Article 11 of the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights prescribe access to safe drinking water and sanitation as an international recognized human right. In this regard, the international community, including EU member states, are obliged to assist the least developed countries in undertaking water irrigation and deforestation programs that would secure access to potable water to all and ensure adequate supplies of water to vast areas of arable land and farms. The EU is taking a sustained, country-driven, locally adapted and rights-based approach with a strong focus on tackling and trench inequalities such as those relating to wealth and gender. In doing so, the European Union is supporting both inclusive and sustainable food systems with economic, social and environmental dimensions and universal health education and social protection services. Between 2014 and 2020, the European Union has been working with 42 partner countries to improve nutrition and related health conditions with a particular focus on child nutrition. The EU's action plan on nutrition addresses the strategic objective in the areas of governance, scaled up interventions and research, and underlines the need to work closely with developed players and partner countries. Policymakers and governments are called upon to support and protect farmland and farmers who are engaged in food production. Humanity is therefore facing great challenges that may undermine its very existence. No one can ignore these challenges, and the international community should convey and agree upon a well-devised action plan that is solely intended to meet these challenges and ensure A, access to all people to potable water, and B, increase food production through investment in new farm techniques, especially in countries of the developing world where the situation is most acute. Farming and the fisheries are also important economic sectors that can contribute in an effective manner to the ailing economies of the least developed countries. Such an action plan should not be solely devised to respond to the acute problems related to hunger and malnutrition, but also to rendering such productive sectors as contributing and income generating sectors to national economies, notably of developing countries. The affluent countries who may fear migratory flows should look at the challenges of human survival without vigor and the most broad and all-encompassing manner. We cannot be inward-looking in seeking remedies, but should be prepared to provide the necessary investment, know-how, techniques, tools to render arable land productive and properly, properly managed offshore fisheries. The opportunities are there. It is a question of whether we are willing to move ahead to overcome hunger and eradicate poverty through a viable programs and projects intended to earn gains to national economies of poor countries. In my opinion, Malta, alongside its EU partners, should embrace such an opportunity to contribute towards such programs and projects that are intended to increase food production in the developing countries and fight hunger and eradicate poverty worldwide. Thank you. I invite now Mr. Brian Vella, Chief Executive Officer, Malta Food Agency, to deliver his speech. Mr. Chairman, Minister, Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, Secretary, Honorable Member of Parliament, Your Excellencies, colleagues, distinguished guests. 
we have gathered to celebrate World Food Day, which is an event of global importance and relevance. This year's theme is Water is Life, Water is Food, Leave No One Behind. This event has been celebrated by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations since 1945. What makes this day even more special for us is the fact that we are here in our country's highest institution, the Parliament of Malta, to discuss matters related to food. It is the relentless efforts of the Malta Food Agency that have made this momentous event possible, demonstrating our unwavering commitment and dedication to prioritizing and emphasizing the importance of food. As we embark on this journey, let us remember that today is not merely a day of discourse, but a day of action. The discussions here should lead to tangible outcomes and practical solutions that benefit our society. The challenges we face are formidable, but our resolve is unyielding. Together, we shall explore avenues for sustainable water use in food production, minimizing waste, and fostering responsible consumption. The success story at the Pitkalia markets and our continuous efforts at the Pishkaria to enhance transparency and eliminate abuses in the food supply chain are fundamental to increased trust amongst our farmers and fishermen. This encourages us to remain committed to being the catalyst to inspire change in our agriculture and fishing industry and strengthening our resolve to motivate and support local farmers and fishermen to improve access to markets, secure fair prices for their produce, and encourage sustainable farming practices. We will continue to promote local produce by assertively advocating the value of locally produced food and prioritizing its importance in the local food system, including our efforts to introduce marketing standards at the Pitkalia market to boost local produce quality. We are taking a proactive approach when it comes to food waste. We will be announcing an interesting project in this regard very soon, because we believe that promoting sustainable food systems and raising awareness about the environmental impact of food waste is part of our values. We strongly believe that collaborating with various stakeholders, including farmers, cooperatives, NGOs, and the government, to develop and implement policies and initiatives that benefit the food sector and the community helps us to bring all our stakeholders in sync with our vision. The, MFA, the Malta Food Agency's diverse work is instrumental in ensuring the safety, quality and sustainability of the food supply in Malta while supporting local farmers and fostering a resilient and healthy food sector. I reiterate that we firmly believe that farmers are the backbone of our food systems and it's our responsibility to support them in every way possible. Our estimated speakers, which hail from diverse backgrounds and experiences, will offer unique perspectives on the theme water is life, water is food, leave no one behind. These insights will serve as a catalyst for our continued growth and progress. We are also honored to have guests from different countries whose support has been invaluable in forging international collaborations to promote Maltese produce globally. Not only are all our strategic partners here with us with all their different suggestions and initiatives, but we have managed to attract representatives from key international organizations such as Trade Promotion Europe and EIT Foods, along with representatives from various other countries, including Ireland, Albania, Austria, the Dominican Republic, Germany, Greece, Hungary, India, Italy, Liechtenstein, Puerto Rico, Spain, and Turkey. Lastly, 
I would like to thank my team for organizing this first plenary session on World Food Day in the country's highest institution. Debating our food and water in Parliament in a non-partisan partisan manner is indeed an annual target which our agency, with the aid of the Speaker of the House, commits itself to meet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Brian Vella, Chief Executive Officer, Malta Food Agency. I now invite Mr. Declan Koppinger, Chairman, Agri-Food Promotion Committee, Trade Promotion Europe. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Members of Parliament, distinguished guests. Um, I'm very grateful for the invitation to contribute on this topic. Although I represent Trade Promotion Europe, I want to give you a case study of my own country from Ireland. Because like Malta, we are, war we are an island nation where water has a special place in our lives. So with sustainability very much in mind, Board BIA, the Irish Food Board, who, which I represent, it's our state agri-food promotion organisation. We were the first to introduce a national food and drink sustainability programme 11 years ago called Origin Green. Back then, we recognised that as population growth continues, the need for food also grows. So too does the pressure on limited natural resources such as water. You are all aware of the critical role of water in food and drink production. It is used to grow and feed agricultural materials, but also to heat, cool and clean during processing. As the global population increases, demand for fresh water grows. This puts serious stress on our water sources. Although Ireland typically has ample rainfall throughout the year, it, uh, conservation of water is important to maintain plentiful supplies during times of scarcity and drought. When we talk about sustainable food production, we are referring to shared responsibility for the production, supply and consumption of safe and nutritious food within a viable industry that protects and enhances our natural environment and quality of life now and in the future. So led by the Irish Food Board with the support of multiple national agencies, the Origin Green Sustainability Programme enables our industry to set and achieve measurable sustainability targets that respect the environment and serve local communities more effectively. The overall ambition of the programme is that Irish food and drink will be the first choice globally because it is trusted as sustainably produced by people who care. Our Global Sustainability Outlook study has further underscored the importance of water as a critical sustainability concern for agenda setters, including external thought leaders and NGOs who are actively shaping the sustainability agenda. As a result, our companies incorporate business objectives aimed at reducing water usage and enhancing wastewater management targets within their sustainability plans. Key to setting a credible water target is the establishment of monitoring and targeting systems in order to understand water consumption data. Member companies' water, water targets typically focus on improving war, water use efficiency within production operations during cooling, heating and wastewater management. In August, of this, in August 2022, we introduced a guidance document offering valuable assistance to our member companies as they formulate water conservation targets as part of their sustainability plans. Results to date show that Origin Green companies have set 173 water targets. To date, this has achieved an 8.8% total water reduction in 2021 versus 2017. However, our larger companies with a revenue of over 50 million in turnover have achieved 16.7% total water reduction in 2021 versus 2017. This result is significant given that these companies are the most significant water users in the Irish food and horticulture industry. To further support companies in achieving water use reductions, this month we are running a water stewardship programme. This programme supports business customers with training on how to lower water consumption and to reduce operating costs while protecting the environment. We have developed two separate programmes to meet the advisory requirements needed by large and small water users. This programme is aimed at those responsible for water management within their company and has the dual target of developing trainee skills at an individual level and delivering tangible impacts at site level. 
I hope that this insight into the actions instigated by the Irish Food Board will motivate and inspire others to undertake similar initiatives so that no one is left behind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kopinger. I now call on Dr. Manuel Sapiano, Chief Executive Officer, Energy and Water Agency in Malta. Chairman, Honourable Minister, Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Honours Members of Parliament, Excellencies, distinguished guests and colleagues. Undoubtedly, water is an essential element for ensuring food security. And in water management systems, this linkage between water and food is generally underlain through what is called the ener water energy food ecosystems nexus. From MLT's perspective, consideration to this WEFA nexus starts from the context of water unavailability a characteristic stemming from our semi-arid Mediterranean climate and the high demand for water reflecting our population density. Natural water resources on their own are simply not sufficient to meet the national water demand. As a sector, agriculture in the Maltese Islands is heavily dependent on groundwater resources, sourcing over 80% of its current water demand from groundwater. This over-dependency on a single resource, which has been degraded due to historical over-abstraction and is highly prone to future climate change impacts, is clearly not sustainable. In fact, Malta's water policy framework, as outlined in our river basin management plans, seeks to achieve security of water supply to the agricultural sector Firstly, through encouraging the application of water demand management measures to ensure a high level of water use efficiency. And secondly, through the development of alternative water supplies to diversify the water resource base available to the sector. Notable examples are the high level of infiltration of drip irrigation techniques in arable agriculture to ensure efficient water use, the launch of the National Water Reuse New Water Program which, when fully commissioned, will be able to address at least 30% of the water demand of the agricultural sector and the promotion of rainwater harvesting techniques, such as on-field reservoirs and other water retention measures, such as the construction of rubble walls, which entails an exercise in rediscovering our Mediterranean water culture. Definitely, there are opportunities for encouraging the sector to invest in further technological advancement in the field of efficient water use, as well as encouraging research and innovation opportunities to improve agricultural practices. However, we also need to look at other linkages within the nexus, in particular, the impact of agriculture on the status of natural freshwater resources, not only from a demand perspective, but also from a qualitative perspective, through the leaching of nutrients, particularly nitrates, and plant protection products to the subsurface environment. But even here, we can look at opportunities. Nutrients leached beneath the root zone are a loss to the agricultural sector. Evidence from monitoring undertaken in the unsaturated zone, so the zone beneath the soil, shows consistent leaching of nutrients under traditional agricultural areas, which, if controlled, can enable a reduction in nutrient application and has enta hence entail less costs to the sector. In fact, the same networks show significantly lower values of nutrient leaching beneath organized agricultural areas, such as vineyards, which have a higher level of control in the application of nutrients. These facts present an opportunity to increase the competitivity of the sector by lowering costs whilst ensuring environmental protection. Definitely a win-win situation which must be pursued. From the Energy and Water Agency perspective, the WEFA nexus is an important element in ensuring integrated water management. And in fact, the agency is participating in a number of initiatives aimed at promoting the application of the nexus. Firstly, at the regional level through the Union for the Mediterranean, where the WEFA nexus is one of the pillars of the UFM's water agenda. The agency is also participating in a PRIMA funded program for establishing a community of practice on the nexus in the Mediterranean. In its drive to support informed policy development, 
The agency also participates in research initiatives such as Under Horizon Europe, specifically a project called Retouch Nexus, and also a cost initiative named NexusNet, where in April next year, the agency will be hosting in Malta an international workshop on the application of the Nexus to ensure better integrated water, energy, food, and ecosystem policies. Looking forward, I wish to highlight the importance of working together to integrate river basin management with agricultural policies, ensuring that agriculture can provide a positive contribution to sustaining the water environment, therefore ensuring future sustainability in alignment with the UFA objectives. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sapiano. I now call Mr. Justin John Camilleri, Chief Officer, Business Development, Malta Food Agency. The floor is yours. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Minister, Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, Honorable Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests. We gather here in the hollowed halls of the Parliament of Malta to commemorate World Food Day. We are met with a profound theme. Water is life, water is food, leave no one behind. This theme resonates well with the work being done by the Malta Food Agency. And it underscores the intricate connection between food, water, and our commitment to creating a more sustainable future. At the Malta Food Agency, our mission revolves around adding value to food. And in doing so, we inherently add value to water as well. This symbiotic relationship between food, water, and our commitment to promote consumption of locally grown produce is at the core of our efforts. Let me explain how. Water is indeed the essence of life, and it is an indispensable resource in food production. Our work focuses on enhancing the quality, safety, and sustainability of the Maltese agribusiness. We recognize that consuming locally grown produce is not just getting a taste of Malta, but also a way to ensure our farmers and fishermen thrive, while reducing the environmental footprint, as we benefit from one of the shortest food supply chains. By ensuring that our local produce meets the highest standards, we not only value the food itself, but also the water that nourishes it. One of the most pressing global challenges we face is food waste, we of, which often goes hand in hand with water waste. The more produce we manage to consume, the less food waste occurs, and consequently, the less water waste ensues. Every piece of locally grown produce saved from being discarded represents a victory against the excessive consumption of our precious water resources. <coughs> in our role as facilitators, we bridge the gaps between various stakeholders within the food industry and related sectors. We understand that collaboration is paramount in addressing complex issues like water scarcity and food security. By bringing together producers, distributors, cooperatives, policymakers, and consumers, we forge connections that enable us to tackle these challenges collectively. Our commitment extends to supporting local food producers, farmers and fishermen. Through trade and promotion, we empower these vital contributors to our food ecosystem. We believe that by uplifting our local heroes and encouraging the consumption of locally grown produce, we not only celebrate the diversity of Maltese cuisine, but also ensure the sustainable use of our water resources for the generations to come. It is not just about getting a taste of Malta, it is about preserving a way of life. But our work doesn't stop here. We are continually exploring innovative approaches and sustainable practices to further align our efforts with the theme of this year's Wet Food Day, as we celebrate the importance of water in food production and the significance of consuming locally produce we are reminded of the need to leave no one behind. In that spirit, we pledge to leave no one behind in our mission to enhance the value of food, water, and the local produce of Malta. We understand that access to safe and nutritious food is a fundamental human right, and it is our duty to ensure that this right is upheld for all. By embracing sustainability, promoting responsible consumption, and championing prudent use of water, 
we can pave the way for a brighter and more equitable future. In closing, I want to express my gratitude to each one of you, our local and international stakeholders, for your unwavering support and dedication to this cause. Together, we can be the change makers, the guardians of our water, and the champions of food security. Let us continue working tirelessly, not just on World Food Day, but every day to leave no one behind in our pursuit of sustainable, nourished world that values the consumption of locally grown produce and the true taste of Malta. Speaking of taste of Malta, I would like to draw your attention to a small token by the Malta Food Agency that you'll find on your desks, a symbolic gesture for World Food Day and a celebration of local, locally grown food. Inside these boxes are locally grown herbs, a reminder of our vision to deliver quality and valuable local food products to different markets, and the tangible way for you to get a taste of Malta. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have one on my desk as well, so I thank you. But when I saw the rabbit and the lamb, I was a bit confused, but now I understood that it's inside we have nine species, etc. Thank you very much, Mr. Camilleri. Mr. Chris Cesaro Vassallo Cesario, President of the Malta Chamber of Commerce, Enterprise and Industry. The floor is yours. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Minister, Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, Honorable Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests. The Malta Chamber of Commerce, Enterprise and Industry recognizes the profound importance of taking decisions in, as our role as the current business leaders. It is our duty to establish the direction, framework, and collaborative platform to bring all stakeholders together and together establish a way we can tackle this, um, <clears throat> this issue of climate change. Our aim is to achieve the necessary measures to keep climate change within manageable limits and ensuring an, a, a, a suitable future for all. A striking example of our commitment to this collaborative effort is our partnership with the National Authority, the Energy and Water Agency, and the Malta Business Bureau, where we came together with the We Make project. Over a year, over a year ago, this initiative was launched to encourage businesses to embrace water efficiency as a fundamental component of their operations. Through the presentation of various compelling case studies, we highlighted how investing in water technology not only safeguards the efficiency, but also the, comp the company's future bottom line, and additionally highlighted the importance of taking care of the growing strain on our Malta water, water, water base. It is crucial to understand that the future availability of this resource is far from guaranteed. Additionally, this collaboration exposed companies to innovative technologies employed in other manufacturing companies and fostering a deeper awareness and understanding of sustainable metrics and, and green credentials. While we diligently pursue collaboration within the current business platform, we must urgently extend these efforts to our education system. And most importantly to our youth, who ultimately are our custodians of the planet. The Malta Chamber, through its economic vision 2020-2025, unequivocally championed the, the concept of a smart Maltese economy. This vision entails a paradigm shift from priorities whereby, whereby we were focusing on improving the living conditions and the overall quality of people's lives while emphasizing the environmental sustainability. We ardently advocated for a united <coughs> front because at the end of the day, this is our planet. To truly achieve this principle of leave no one behind, we must recognize that we cannot operate in isolation. It is only through collaborative efforts 
and collaborative efforts that we can genuinely make a substantial and lasting difference. Together, we can ensure a brighter and more sustainable future for Malta and the world at large. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Alexei Dingli, Senior Lecturer of Artificial Intelligence, Faculty of ICT, University of Malta. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Minister, Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests. Imagine going a day, just one day, without water. No morning coffee, no shower, no tap to quench your thirst. Now imagine that being your life every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the reality of many in Malta. But before we delve into this pressing issue, let's take a moment to acknowledge the luxury of having water at our fingertips, a luxury not afforded to, to everyone. We live in a world where, you know, with the mobile, you can summon almost anything with the swipe of your fingers. Yet the most basic of all human needs, water, is still out of reach for many. Here in Malta, we have a hidden crisis which affects those that are invisible amongst us. At the soup kitchen, or Fem Valletta, we serve daily 120 people. Many of them don't have a home, let alone a tap. They look into bins for plastic containers, a task which was made increasingly difficult, ironically, due to the recycling schemes. When they finally find a container, they bring it to us to fill it with water. This isn't a choice, it's a necessity to survival. And this is not an isolated case, it's a systematic failure we must address. But the issue goes beyond just quenching thirst. Imagine not being able to shower, to wash your hands, to feel clean, an essential commodity we all do daily. But some of the people who come to us don't shower for days, and in some cases, even weeks. We provide that service too, but the very need of it is a stark reminder that we are failing as a society. The lack of clean water doesn't just affect physical health. It impacts mental well-being as well, perpetuates social inequalities, and erodes human dignity. <clears throat> How can one of these homeless attend a job interview in such a state? How can he stand up on his two feet and try to rebuild his life? Water is not a privilege. Water is a fundamental human right. Even the United Nations in 2010 declared access to clean water and sanitation a human right. We all believe that this is a small milestone to achieve, yet here we are, 2023, still failing to provide the basic right to everyone. We must ask ourselves, how did we get here? And more importantly, how do we move forward? A few years back, the Holy Father invited everyone to change the current culture of indifference with a culture of providence. So as we stand here today commemorating World Food Day with the theme, Water is Life, Water is Food, Leave No One Behind, let's make a pledge. Let's not just talk about change, let's be the change. It's time for government agencies, private sector, and each of us to step up. Let's ensure that access to clean water is not dependent on one's living conditions or social economic status. Let's invest in sustainable solutions, advocate for public changes, policy changes, and foster community partnerships. Water is life, water is food, and it's high time, high time we leave no one thirsty. Let's turn this crisis into an opportunity for collective action, because the right to water is the right to life, and that is a right we must guarantee for everyone. Let this not just be a speech, but a catalyst for action, a rally cry for society, for social justice, and a blueprint for a future where water flows freely for all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Dingley. Dr. Paolo Garofalo, President of the Centro Studi per la Ricerca e la Documentazione sul Mediterraneo e il Mezzogiorno. Thank you. Onorevole Presidente della Camera, Onorevole Ministro, Onorevole Segretario Parlamentare, Onorevoli Membri della Camera, Ufficiali del Malta Food Agency, Distinti Delegati, Signore e Signori Presenti. Per conto del Centro Studi MedMeds, che sta compiendo ricerche sul tema del cibo nel Mezzogiorno d'Italia e nel Mediterraneo, porgo i più sentiti ringraziamenti per averci voluto in questo importante consesso. Il tema della giornata mondiale dell'alimentazione di quest'anno, l'acqua è vita, l'acqua ci nutre, discussa oggi a Malta, isola cerniera del Mediterraneo tra l'Europa e l'Africa, interpreta pienamente la volontà dell'ONU 
quando nel 1945, il 16 ottobre, istituì la FAO, l'Organizzazione per l'Alimentazione e l'Agricoltura delle Nazioni Unite, con lo scopo di sensibilizzare sui problemi della denutrizione e malnutrizione del mondo. Se il 70% del pianeta è composto da acqua, quella dolce è solo il 2,5% e quella potabile è accessibile a meno di 6 miliardi di persone. Mentre più di 2 miliardi e mezzo di persone, quasi il 39% della popolazione della Terra, non dispone di acqua potabile né di servizi igienico-sanitari di base, è parti del Medio Oriente, regioni dell'India, della Cina e vaste aree dell'Africa sono già fortemente condizionate ad una vita assolutamente insalubre. Se questo è un pessimo dato, quello catastrofico, redatto in un rapporto segreto della Nestlé e pubblicato da Wikileaks, annuncia che nel 2050 l'acqua potabile potrebbe essere completamente esaurita. Carenza di acqua ed altri ovvi effetti del cambiamento climatico sono correlati, oltre che alle guerre in continuo aumento e all'aumento demografico, anche alla cultura che gli uomini contribuiscono attorno al bisogno del cibo. Il nutrimento non è più solo un bisogno naturale, ma un vero e proprio linguaggio politico, munito di una forte pragmatica nelle relazioni tra il cibo e l'uomo. Il cibo come segno, quindi, come significante, come significato di altro significato, che diventa potere sociale o in sua assenza disagio e povertà. Mangiare carne o pesce ha voluto dire per decenni far parte di un popolo o di un gruppo agiato. I prodotti agricoli erano invece il nutrimento dei poveri. Dal Medioevo in poi essere grassi è stato sinonimo di ricchezza, il banchetto opulento era l'esibizione plastica del potere. Ma il costo per alcuni prodotti lo sostiene l'intera comunità. Ad esempio, per produrre una caloria di carne occorre dieci volte la quantità di acqua che serve per produrre una caloria con le verdure. Ciò nonostante il consumo di carne aumenta esponenzialmente e continuamente, soprattutto in alcune regioni del mondo, e con la velocizzazione dei trasporti, la distribuzione vasta di prodotti alimentari ha determinato una, una trasformazione dei significanti semiotici. Non più la quantità è significante di ricchezza, ma la qualità. Gli alimenti nutraceutici per i ricchi, i farinacei per i poveri, le bacche di goji, manzo di cobe, papaya da una parte, couscous, paella, polenta dall'altra. Ora magro è sinonimo di benessere e grasso è diventato segno di povertà. Sono infatti sempre più le persone che acquistano prodotti riempitivi, meno costosi, come farinacee, salsicce e altri trash food. L'acqua e il cibo diventano quindi status, diventano caratterizzanti sociali e politici. La disparità nella distribuzione rimane un conflitto sociale e geopolitico che non si riesce a risolvere. Infatti se la guerra è esasperazione delle questioni che la politica non riesce a risolvere, le stragi di fame sono il peggior fallimento politico di tutti i tempi. Paradossalmente, mezzo secolo dopo la crisi del Biafra, si calcola che anche a causa delle 59, quando ho mandato il, il documento, delle 60 ora con il nuovo conflitto in Medio Oriente, con le 60 guerre attualmente in corso, alla fine del 2023 i morti per fame nel pianeta saranno 45 milioni e già oggi 30 milioni tra il Sud Sudan e il Corno d'Africa non hanno né cibo né acqua sufficiente alla sopravvivenza. Infine, l'ONU somma circa 2 miliardi di persone a rischio fame e povertà, conseguenza anche dei cambiamenti climatici che sono stati in quest'Aula discussi lo scorso anno, signor Presidente. Cioè, nonostante la popolazione mondiale è passata dai 2 miliardi del 1927 a 7 miliardi nel 2011. Nel 2023, in soli ulteriori 12 anni, si è arrivati a superare la soglia degli 8 miliardi. Ciò significa 
che la politica internazionale ha aggirato il problema della carenza di cibo senza risolvere il conflitto della disuguaglianza. E questo sistema, oramai in crisi irreversibile, deve trovare un'alternativa alla gestione politica delle risorse globali capace di ripensare la politica del nutrimento delle diete, rispettoso dell'ambiente, per non lasciare indietro nessuno, come incita la FAO in questa ricorrenza mondiale. Ringrazio quindi Malta, ogni organizzazione, ogni donna e ogni uomo che ha voluto e ha partecipato a questa giornata ed anticipo subito che il Centro Studi MedMeds offre la propria collaborazione alle organizzazioni maltesi per una ricerca sul cibo nel Mediterraneo rivolta alla conoscenza del passato per riorientare oggi il consumo del cibo verso un sistema ecosostenibile da lasciare alle future generazioni. Non ci resta molto tempo, questa è la sfida che l'umanità rivolge verso se stessa per garantire una sana cultura del nutrimento e un uso sostenibile delle risorse. Questa sfida non ha alternative, può e deve essere vinta. Grazie. Grazie. Sei Hessal, il dottor Massimo Alul, Business Development Advisor, Malta Food Agency. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Minister, Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, Honorable Members of Parliament, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests. Water and food are themes which inevitably lead to a neutral and bland discussion with no real drastic disagreement from any side of the local and international political spectrum. And basically, a field day for armchair philosophers, debating in abstract and generic terms. Malta, however, does not have the luxury of wasting such precious time on such discussions which lead to nowhere, especially when one talks about the need to collectively take care of water, precious water, since on its own, and as a very essential component in the, fruit, in the food process, it literally means life, and it literally means millions of euros spent every year, which could be elsewhere spent more beneficially. Ever since Emperor Charles V gave the option to the Knights of St. John in 1529 of either possessing Malta or Tripoli in Libya, Malta's arid and rocky state and the absolute lack of water found on our islands became public knowledge. These deficiencies were brought to the fore due to the wrecker party of knights sent by Grand, the Grand Master to gauge which territory suited them most. The wrecker party's findings were simple and straight to the point. Go any place you want, not Malta. It's too arid, too rocky, and no fresh water. Luckily for us, Grand Master the Lilla Dam ignored the record party, and the rest is history. In due course, the Knights and the subsequent British colonists built massive reservoirs in order to lose as little as possible of precious rainwater. In due course, Malta became one of the experts in the Mediterranean Sea with regards to the desalination process of reverse osmosis. But are we there yet in the 21st century? Let me ask some questions on the subject since I'm not a technical expert. Where are we as a nation in the master plan of upgrading and reusing all the reservoirs bequeathed to us by our forefathers throughout our land? Do we really believe that the allocated budget is enough for such an initiative? Can we keep on relying on private donations to increase resources and funds in these important sectors? Private donations who some of them are making their profits from the selling of bottled water instead of fresh water. Why is the subject of water as a, as a precious commodity not benefiting from a fully active interministerial committee in order to ensure complete synergy between the state players on the subject in question? Do we not believe that the education ministry has a huge responsibility in its didactic resources to get the message across to the younger generation on what we need to do to be water conscious. Or the Ministry of Agriculture, whose mission is to give more tools to farmers to maximize their produce, which will in turn maximize the efficient use of water. Or the Ministry of Infrastructure and Capital Projects, who should ensure maximization of our aquifers and water hold, and also ensure that all new public projects 
should keep the conservation of water in mind, not in paper, but in practice. All these ministries and more do not have water within their remit, but they certainly should play an essential part in such an essential initiative. And when are we going to stop seeing our roads turn into tiny rivers of rainwater being lost in every precious rainstorm we have? Thousands and thousands of litres of fresh water lost every year to salty seawater. In my 50 plus years or so, I have always witnessed such a scenario year in and year out, irrespective of who is in government. Lastly, water services com uh, WSC authorities constantly confirm to us that our tap water is drinkable and definitely not harmful to us. At the same time, Maltese families annually increase their shopping costs of bottled water year by year. Restaurants serve bottled water at increasingly ridiculous prices. So who is right? Water services, the WSC, or the Maltese consumer? If what WSC is saying is true, then we are collectively responsible for burdening our families with uncalled for costs, increasing the wastage of plastic with all its related environmental and side effects. Bigger countries who certainly do not have a water problem like we have, the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, a lot of Central and Eastern European countries, welcome guests to their restaurants with free tap water in glass jars in the middle of the table. We don't. Why? We can go on and on with so many different arguments on this subject matter. I sincerely hope that the Malta Food Agency, like it has already done in other initiatives throughout its short but meaningful history, will be the catalyst for change, even if the sector, so that we do not lose the possibility of doing our bit and leaving no one behind. Just as this year's FAO team states. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Massimo Moel Lul. I call now Mr. David Trirep, Chairman of the Malta Council for Economic <coughs> and Social Development. Um, Mr. Speaker, uh, Members of Parliament, distinguished guests, fellow Maltese and guests of our country, welcome and thank you for hearing me out. Dr. Elul, hearing you speak, uh, I could not but relate to the fact of most of the things I was about to say. Especially because in my, in my uh, studies of history, of course, one of the things that came to me all the time were, were the discoveries of the Knights of Malta when they were look, coming to Malta. And not only were they worried about the scarcity of water, but also what would happen in the case for the need of food security and what would happen in the case of extreme circumstances. And therefore, um, they actually went to the extreme of uh, building silos in Valletta and in Floriana to ensure that in the case of extreme circumstances, political or climatic, then things will be sorted out. Here we are 500, 600 years later, and we are asking the same question um, again. Maybe, uh, maybe one of the things that worry me, and maybe one of the things I would write, like to relay in my uh, little few minutes this morning, is our over-dependence on technology. The fact that we have incredible, really efficient um, reverse osmosis um, uh, uh, equipment to remind, to, to, to get us to forget the importance of the resource of water and what it would take for us to have tap water. The fact that we import over 80% of the, of the food that we consume. We forget that the food we find in our supermarkets and in the grocery stores is not grown in Malta, but actually is imported because um, there is the ease of transporting uh, food uh, um, from outside our country, with the risks that this brings about. I have to remind uh, the people in this room of the concerns we had um, in March 2020 when COVID hit the whole world, and all of a sudden we realized that maybe Genova was about to close. And what if we had high seas and high winds in the water between Malta and Sicily? Malta could have been deprived of food. So when we talk about um, quality of life, we must think of climate change and the vulnerabilities that this country will, no doubt, endure because of climate change. And it's yet, yes, to do with water, yes, to do with the ability for us to source water, yes, certainly our ability to ensure that we have enough food. This is basic 
quality of life. We're not talking about technology, we're not talking about internet, we're talking about roads, mobility, we're just talking about food and water. And this makes our country really vulnerable. Let us be tangible. I'm not a person who looks at pointing fingers, but we are in a room that talks about the need for change. And we are in a room where, as of late, we've been talking about economic models, economic vision, and the ability to see beyond what it is we have today. Now, if we had to measure success of any economic model or vision, or the quality of life we want of our people, and the way we measure it, we must be focusing on water and food as a starter. The rest will follow. So therefore, when we talk about ensuring that no one is left behind, it's not about just whether we have enough food and water uh, on our tables every day for everyone. Of course we do. But also, do we have the skills? Do we have the ability to be able to transform our economy, to ensure that as we potentially, hopefully, transform our agricultural policies from one which is romantic, one which is very traditional, to one which is an economic sector, an economic model, an economic force in its own right. Why not? Why shouldn't we? Especially when it feeds into straight into the quality of life of the people that, uh, that live in this country. And the visitors, of course, that, um, that, uh, that, that, uh, that join us. Thank you, Dr. Elul. What is this fixation with bottled water in this country? Why is it that we have to give bottled water free of charge whenever we go to a supermarket? And if you don't have it, what do you do with the water? You have to consume this water, even at the expense of the obviously very good water we have in our taps. What is this obsession of generating waste only to come up with another scheme to manage that waste because of the waste we generated in trying to source the water which is available in our taps in the first place? This is craziness. We talk about a new economy, and I cannot, of course, not talk about a blue and a green economy. And of course, um, in my humble view, and I'm no expert, but I've discussed this a couple of times, <laughs> we've discussed about the green economy, but also the blue economy. And I know in this country we're taking the blue economy rather seriously, not only because we have a lot of blue, uh, more than we have green, but also because there is really good technological opportunities to use the water space around our country to generate food, of course, and apart from to generate water. This is where the technology um, is. It will, hopefully, even as we focus on reducing waste, not only reducing water waste, but also reducing food waste, whether grown internally or whether imported externally, is an essential part of the sustainability of this country, of the new economic model we need to have, of the quality of life that gives fresh produce and fresh water to everybody living in the country and the visitors that join it. So blue farming in, 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 in an ability where everybody is contributing. I have to hear hail, hail. I'm not sure that there are representatives of the blind uh, Maltese farmers um, in this room, but certainly having people with limited abilities, but with different abilities, to be able to contribute to this exact cause is a celebration, I think, in itself. Malta, with the history and the experiences of the, of the Knights of St. John more than five year, five, 500 years ago in identifying the shortfalls of food and water and the ability to, and the ability to address shortfalls and, uh, and the risk is being faced, is, is, we're being faced with that today. We should be a center of excellence, not only because we're in the center of the Mediterranean, but because we're thinking hard. We are in a room of great thinkers who are able to bring this forth and make this an integral part of who we are, of making sure that we respect not only each other, the way we speak to each other, the way we think with each other, but also in the manner with which we look at things, and as basic as that we require in the quality of life, just food and water. We are living in a world of transition and insecurities. Transition, yes. Insecurities, of course, with everything that's happening in, our, in, our, in, in, in the world, including the Mediterranean and Europe. If we want to take our vision seriously, we have to start with what is basic. And that certainly is the food and the water security given by the basics and the obvious. Thank you. Thank you very much. You were mentioning colors. I have colors as well. <laughs> The green means that you are close to running. 
um, beyond your time limit, the red, please close for everyone, okay? We have a lot of um, people who obviously would like to deliver their speeches, and we have another two pages of um, speeches here, names, just names for people to speak. So I call now Ms. Jackie Mercia, producer of programs linked to agriculture, food, water, and nutrition, who I follow often. Jackie Mercia. Mr. Chairman, Honourable Minister, Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Honourable Members, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Friends, Colleagues. Since 1981, every October, the world gets together to celebrate World Food Day and focuses on particular aspects related to food. The theme chosen by the Food and Agriculture Organization this year, as you've heard over and over again, is water is life, water is food, leave no one behind. Water is essential, vital, precious. It is the driving force of all nature and it plays a cardinal role in all aspects of food systems. It is a scarce resource, yet we still take it for granted as we take food for granted. I'm going to focus on agriculture. Agriculture is a highly water-dependent sector, and water is one of the many challenges farming faces. To feed the world, agriculture has, alas, contributed to water scarcity conditions in many regions around the world, with excessive groundwater pumping causing groundwater depletion. It has also been a contributor to pollution of groundwater aquifers. To mitigate this, we need to act now. Climate change, together with an increase in global demand for food, driven by population growth, economic development, rising incomes and urbanization, threaten water availability and the production of food. Only long-term sustainable farming can guarantee food security and decrease our vulnerability to water security and water scarcity. We need to address and reduce food loss and food waste in agriculture as this is squandering resources, including water. If we lose less, more food will be available and we would not have to use more water to produce extra food to make up for the rise in demand. We need market studies, so we plan what we grow, and we grow what we need. It is unacceptable to leave vegetables and fruit unharvested or thrown away because the market is flooded and the price is low. Malta needs the public and private sector to get together and invest in storage and cooling facilities. We need a processing facility for freezing vegetables and fruit. Furthermore, the agricultural sector needs better water management. It needs to increase water use efficiency and reduce its reliance on groundwater. We need more investment in water efficient technologies. We need efficient, well-maintained irrigation systems and treated wastewater, or what we call new water, needs to be available to more farmland. In our fields, we must harvest rainwater. There are various methods to capture and store rainwater, both from rooftops and from the ground service. Let's make this happen. The farming community needs to accept change, learn from each other's experience, and be open to different farming methods and practices, such as conservation tillage, permaculture, cover crops, compost, and mulch. The FAO is telling the world, do not leave anyone behind. Climate change will make growing crops harder, which will impact production, market prices, and food security. It is imperative that everyone has access and can afford fresh, nutritious fruit and vegetables regularly. We therefore cannot lose farmers. We cannot lose active farmland. Lower supplies would mean higher prices, making it unaffordable to some families. 
food security and affordability can be achieved by our inequivocal commitment to ensure the survival, sustainability, prosperity and future of a farming community. We need to encourage and empower young people to take on farming, to bring together knowledge and experience from our forefathers, together with science, new technologies, and different farming practices. Taking much needed measures about water today will ensure that our descendants will not be left behind. But why should we care about the future, especially a future that we will not live to see? Well, some parts of the future includes us. Secondly, we care for our children and grandchildren. They, in turn, will care about theirs and so on. Therefore, the chain of human connection and caring continues unbroken into the future. So does the chain of obligation. Farmers, consumers and policymakers have the power, the duty and the choice to make a difference for those who come after us. People in the future, too, have a right to life to water, to fresh, delicious, healthy food, and they have the right to not be left behind. Thank you very much, Jackie. A little bit over the time, but fantastic. Sorry. Mr. Jason Vella, Chief Executive of Third Circular Economy Malta. Chairman, Honourable Minister, Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Members of Parliament, esteemed partners, stakeholders and colleagues. It is an honor to stand before you today as a representative of Circular Economy Malta, a major stakeholder in innovation for sustainable practices. On the significant occasion of World Food Day, we convene as custodians of a shared future. The team that unites us, water is life, water is food, leave no one behind, encapsulates the ethos of our commitment to sustainability through the economic principles of circularity. As we gather to discuss this vital theme, we acknowledge that water is not just a resource. It is the lifeblood of our communities and the cornerstone of a circular economy. Circular Economy Malta is a government agency with a mission to facilitate the shift from a linear to a circular economy by effectively managing recyclable resources. We gauge success through innovative schemes that extend resource life cycles, increase the presence of recyclable materials in the market, and influence local culture and perceptions regarding the value of resources and reusable waste. Together with our strategic partners, we stand at the forefront of a paradigm shift and today, in collaboration with the Malta Food Agency, proceed on a journey to explore the intricate connection between water, food, and the circular economy. The circular economy paradigm compels us to move beyond the traditional linear models of consumption and disposal. It urges us to reimagine our relationship with resources, emphasizing reduction, reuse, and the recycling. Water, being a finite resource, demands our utmost attention in this framework. It is not merely a component in our food production, it plays a pivotal role in, in the sustainable cycle of regenerative practices. Circular economic principles enhance water preservation through initiatives like industrial water recycling, grey water systems, rainwater harvesting in urban design, precision irrigation in agriculture, and circular product design for water efficient technologies. Wastewater treatment with resource recovery, prompting product life extension, circular supply chains, and water efficient packaging for further contribute to the reduction of waste from our valuable water resources. It is noteworthy that Malta, as an, uh, an island nation, has been steadfast in adopting water conservation practices for several years. The commitment is ex exemplified through legislative measures mandating water storage and new development, the introduction of resource-efficient RO, resource reverse osmosis processes, 
and the deployment of the new water project. This pioneering project led by our colleagues at Water Services Corporation polishes wastewater, make it safe and available primarily for agricultural use, showcasing Malta's dedication to sustainable water management. On the occasion of World Food Day, we recognize the importance of forging partnerships and collaborations that transcend organizational boundaries. Circular Economy Malta, in conjunction with its strategic partners, is committed to create a platform where innovative ideas can flourish. We envision a future where water is used responsibly, food is produced sustainably, and no one is left behind. The circular economy is not just a concept, it's a way of life. It is about nurturing our resources, ensuring the longe their longevity, and le leaving a legacy of sustainable practices for generations to come. As we commemorate the 78th anniversary of, of the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, let us reflect on the journey traveled and the road ahead. We recognize that sustainability is not an option, but a necessity. And the circular economy is a powerful tool in achieving that goal. In conclusion, let, us, let our discussions today be a testament to our shared commitment to a circular future where water, food, and the well-being of our, our communities are inter intertwined. Let us pave the way for a future where the mantra, water is life, water is food, leave no one behind, is not just spoken, but lived in every facet of our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Jason Vella. I now call Ms. Josephine Schembri, Chief Officer, Market Regulation, Malta Food Agency. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Honourable Minister, Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Honourable um, Member of the Parliament, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests. It is an honour to be part of this memorable day as we commemorate the World Food Day of global significance. A day we, as Malta Food uh, Agency, do recognise this day as an, import, an, as an opportunity to join the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, other entities and stakeholders from different countries, in highlighting the responsible use of natural resources and the social responsibilities that brings along. This year's theme, water is life, water is food, leave no one behind. Lil Maul Haya, highlights the critical role of water in food production. We are acutely aware of how much access to good quality water is essential for food production. Water is a fundamental element in everyday's life and moreover in agriculture sector and its responsible use is crucial. On a personal note, I feel fortunate to have been raised in a family that instilled in me a deep respect for natural resources, food and various sectors of the agri-food sector, including farmers and fishermen. This upbringing has left a last, lasting impression and fueled my dedication towards the sector. Over the years, I have been actively involved in the industry and now as part of the Malta Food Agency, I have the opportunity to continue to contribute back to the community. Indeed, as it was already pointed out, education and upbringing are fundamental, as already mentioned. One of our priorities at the Malta Food Agency is to enhance the quality of local fresh fruits and vegetables to ensure quality products on the market for the final consumer, a sustainable income for producers, and to reduce food waste. Responsible food production certainly reduces water wastage, a critical consideration for our small islands like Malta and Gozo, where water for agriculture is considered as a precious resource. 
ensuring fair and sustainable income for our fruit producers, farmers and fishermen and our cooperatives, as well as providing consumers with affordable access to fresh food through initiatives like, for example, the farmers market, is a central part of our work. We are committed to collaborate with various stakeholders to minimize food waste and extend assistance to disadvantaged sectors within the agro-food industry. The principle of leaving no one behind, Manhallo Lil Hat Lura, takes on a special meaning for me personally. As a parent of two children uh, who require continuous assistance due to their intellectual and physical disability caused by a rare uh, developmental condition, their presence, nevertheless, in my life has challenged me to adopt a more inclusive perspective towards others. I encourage all of you here today to grab every opportunity to explore ways and means to be inclusive and support less advantage, yes, why not, food production sectors, stakeholders, and in the other individuals. A minor change in our approach can make a significant difference on others. Natural resources and food offer us an endless opportunities to work and collaborate together towards a more sustainable and equitable future. The Malta Food Agency already has several initiatives in place and we are committed to continue developing further in the future. Collaboration with partners and stakeholders is essential to harness the potential of unused resources and provide assistance to those in need. In closing, I suggest let us remember that on this World Food Day our collective actions can make a positive impact on the responsible use of natural resources, the sustainability of our food production systems, and the well-being of all, leaving no one behind. Thank you for your attention, and let us work together towards a brighter future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Josephine Schembri. I call now Dr. Stephanie Fabri, economist and lecturer, the University of Malta. Mr. Chairman, Honourable Minister, Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Honourable Members of Parliament, Your Excellency, distinguished guests. Today we come here to discuss a topic that is not only crucial for the survival um, of our humanity, but is also intrinsically linked to the social and economic well-being of humanity. Water is life, water is food, leave no one behind, like Josephine said, manhalul hat barra, which is more powerful when you hear it in Maltese. Leave no one behind when the Mediterranean represents 60% of the water poor, which is defined as less than 100 meters cubed per capita per year from the whole population, from the total population, when we only represent 8% as a Mediterranean of the, lo local, of the global population. Water is indeed the essence of life, and it is inseparable from food security, a topic of immense importance globally. However, as we discuss this, we cannot ignore the significant challenges that the Mediterranean is facing, where access to clean and safe water is often a daily struggle to many people. This is where water technology comes into play. And one of the most promising technology in this context, which was mentioned previously, is desalination. With the Mediterranean Sea at the doorstep of Malta, this technology holds tremendous potential for addressing both local and regional scarcity issues. Malta, a small but dynamic island nation in the Mediterranean, has a unique opportunity to become a hub for water technology, and I truly believe that the Food Agency plays a crucial role in all of this. We can do something about it. Malta can follow an inspiring path by fostering a conductive ecosystem. It is useless discussing water in isolation without looking at the ecosystem for water technology startups in line with the broader vision of the government that the government has for Malta. So we have to look at water as part of the whole national government vision. 
We already have achieved a lot as a, as a small island state that desalinates all its water requirements and is also producing new water. The Mediterranean region, with its diverse culture and church challenges, presents the ideal environment for collaboration and knowledge exchange in the field of water technology. By nurturing startups, local and international, promoting research and development locally, and facilitating partnerships in neighboring country, Malta can play a pivotal role in addressing regional water scarcity issues, and of course, by all means, um, having value-added jobs in this regard. Moreover, as we discuss water, we cannot ignore the complex issue of migration flows, particularly in the context, of course, of the Mediterranean. Water scarcity and the resultant food insecurity are amongst the driving factors of migration. By addressing these core issues that are at the source to sustainable water technology solutions, Malta can contribute to mitigating forced migration and promoting regional stability. In conclusion, the nexus between water, food security, technology and migration in the Mediterranean are undeniable. Water is life water is food, reminds us of our collective responsibility that no one is actually left behind in the pursuit of a better future. Distinguished guests, some facts. I will close off with three facts. 38% of the EU population was affected by water scarcity in 2019, 38%. There are 9 billion economic costs of drafts each year in the EU, mainly related to agriculture and the energy sector. An increase in global warming by, 2000, by the year 2100 <laughs> will increase this economic cost from 9 billion a year to 45 billion a year. Malta, with its strategic location and potential for water technology innovation, has the power to actually lead the way forward for a more water secure and food secure Mediterranean region. We just need the right ecosystem and vision in place. Let us embrace this opportunity, collaborate with our neighbours and strive to leave no one behind on the journey of a more sustainable, prosperous and secure future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Fabri. I call now the Honourable Dr. Sebastiano Fabio Venezia, member of the Sicilian Regional Assembly. Microphone. Thank you. Grazie Presidente, Signor Ministro, onorevoli colleghi, illustri relatori, partecipanti. Intervengo con molto piacere in questo luogo sacro della democrazia di questo Paese in occasione, come è stato ricordato, della giornata mondiale dell'alimentazione voluta dalla FAO. L'attualità del tema L'incontro denso di contenuti ci impone una riflessione rigorosa e senza infiggimenti di ciò che sta accadendo attorno a noi. Negli ultimi cento anni la temperatura globale media della superficie terrestre è aumentata di quasi un grado e il periodo compreso tra il 1995 e il 2006 è stato il più caldo mai registrato da quando sono iniziati i rilevamenti. Sta aumentando la temperatura degli oceani e il livello dei mari. Si sta velocemente riscaldando l'Artico. Si acidificano gli oceani. Aumentano gli eventi climatici estremi e le trasformazioni dei cicli vitali delle specie vegetali e animali. In base agli scenari futuri previsti dai climatologi, e presi in considerazione nel Summit di Parigi sul clima, se non si adotteranno misure per la riduzione delle emissioni globali, entro il 2100 le temperature terrestri potrebbero aumentare, aumentare, come è già stato ricordato, di circa 4 gradi, compromettendo gravemente la produzione alimentare. Le precipitazioni diventeranno sempre più intense e relativamente meno frequenti, e lo stiamo vedendo anche in, questi, in queste settimane che, ci, che hanno preceduto questo incontro, con uno spiccato aumento degli eventi estremi. La produzione del cibo rappresenta una delle principali vittime del riscaldamento globale. Il cibo è strettamente legato alle condizioni ambientali. 
la produzione, lo stoccaggio, la distribuzione, i mercati sono di conseguenza sensibili alle condizioni meteorologiche estreme e alle fluttuazioni climatiche. La produzione alimentare e la sua qualità sono anch'esse condizionate dalla qualità dei suoli e dalla presenza delle acque. Un rapporto di Oxfam stima che, in assenza di mutamenti sostanziali e di scelte strategiche da parte dei governi, entro il 2030 i prezzi delle derrate alimentari potrebbero aumentare del 70-90% e il potenziale effetto dei cambiamenti climatici potrebbe far lievitare il prezzo di alimenti fondamentali per il sostentamento dell'umanità, il mais, il frumento e il riso. Ad avvalorare la tesi, negli ultimi anni ci sono stati tre picchi dei prezzi degli alimenti a livello globale, nel 2008, nel 2010 e nel 2012, tutti in concomitanza con condizioni climatiche estreme che si sono verificate. E mentre aumenta la popolazione globale, come ricordava Paolo Garofolo, e diminuiscono di giorno in giorno i terreni coltivabili, a per via del processo di desertificazione, il numero globale delle persone che soffre la fame potrebbe aumentare del 20% entro il 2050 e sarà particolarmente grave in continenti a noi vicini come l'Africa subsahariana, dove toccherà percentuali del 65%, si stima. I risultati positivi ottenuti negli ultimi anni nella lotta contro la fame saranno messi a rischio e fortemente pregiudicati. Anche lo spreco alimentare, alimentare ha effetti assolutamente negativi sul clima e qui vorrei fare una breve digressione. Ogni anno nel mondo si sprecano complessivamente 1,3 miliardi di tonnellate di cibo, un terzo della produzione totale. Gli sprechi, secondo la FAO, avvengono per il 50% a monte nella fase di produzione, raccolta e immagazzinaggio e per il 46% invece avvengono a valle nelle fasi di trasformazione, distribuzione e consumo. Alla luce del quadro sovraesposto ci attendano sfide importanti e non più differibili. Per queste ragioni Abbiamo voluto intraprendere un concreto rapporto di collaborazione con l'Agenzia del Cibo Maltese. La Sicilia è pronta a raccogliere questa sfida perché il Mediterraneo è l'epicentro di ciò che sta accadendo sotto questo aspetto e a consolidare la cooperazione con Malta per scambiare nuove pratiche, innovazione e scambi commerciali all'insegna della cooperazione. La delegazione siciliana oggi qui presente composta da autorevoli interlocutori, col diretti, CNA, il Centro Studi Medmez, i nostri consulenti legali Anna Maria Montaneri e Giulio Signorelli, è già al lavoro per far sì che questi auspici si possano trasformare presto in azioni concrete, concrete e sostenibili. Nel segno degli antichi rapporti di amicizia e fratellanza tra Malta e la Sicilia, con entusiasmo e passione siamo ben lieti di fare la nostra parte. Grazie per la cortese attenzione. Grazie, onorevole Fabio Venezia. I call now your highness, Hertha Margaret Hansberg Lottingen, president of the International Flame of Peace Movement. Okay. Onorevole chairman, onorevole minister, onorevole parliament secretary, Honorable members, excellencies, distinguished guests, as the founder and president of the Association for the Furtherance of Peace in Vienna, Austria, I want to share a short introduction to our activities. The Association for the Furtherance of Peace and the Flame of Peace Award is a non-profit organization that is not politically or religious affiliate and was founded to support all activities for the flame of peace. It is headquartered in Vienna, in Austria. We are committed to helping others. Where faith was unfortunate, we encourage communication, dialogue. We support organizations that work 
practically in emergency situations and support and promote projects to protect our nature and environment. Therefore, it is important for me to highlight our commitment to supporting projects around the world that have a positive impact on nature and the environment. Being in harmony with this means that people are open to dialogue and peace efforts. When you take care of Mother Earth, you also take care of your neighbor. Feeding the people of this world is one of the greatest challenges of our time. Our constant work for peace also means initiatives and work to improve our environment and our water. Clean water is paramount for the existence of all living things. Water is life, water is food, leave no on behind. We are very interested in supporting food production around the world. For example, we founded together with partners a drinking water well project in Cameroon, Africa, and Water for Life Drinking Water for Schools in Thailand, Asia. Social protection and agricultural technology are paramount when it comes to helping countries feed their people. As president of the international organization Flame of Peace, I am pleased to use our contacts and networks to support your organizations for Mother Earth. My hope is that many more mm. persons will commit themselves to our principles of taking responsibility for people, countries, organizations, nature and the environment for uniting friendship and peace in the world. For me, it is very important to protect our nature to promote the production of healthy food and at the same time keeping our water, rivers, lakes and ocean clean. Without clean water, there is no life. It is very important to have friendship between nations so we can work more together to promote peace and to promote nature. My husband is leading a consortium for green projects focusing energy and food production. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Highness. I now introduce Your Highness Sander Hansberg Lottingen, Archduke of Austria and Chairman of the Hansberg Advisory Trust. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning. Buongiorno. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Minister, Honorable Parliament Secretary, Honorable, Honorable Members of Parliament, Excellencies and Distinguished Guests. It is a pleasure for me to be allowed to share a few words with you here today. Today we are celebrating World Food Day and the theme is water. Water is life, water is food, leave no one behind. Today we need to provide food and water for the world population of over 8 billion people. Already 1.1 billion people worldwide lack access to water. And a total of 2.7 billion find water scarce. This is already an excess of one third of the world population. Water is the elixir of life and probably the food we waste the most. Each drop is precious, but instead of conserving it and using it prudently, we let it run off unused and become spoiled through contamination by our industrialized societies. Unfortunately, it's not only industry that is contaminating our water, but also agricultural and food production itself are not only producing healthy food, but also destroying our soil by being contaminated by fertilizers and pesticides. There are indications that up to one third of European groundwater supplies have high levels of nitrate contamination, all under the argument that we need to feed the people. 
Each person needs three to four liters of water per day to live. In Europe, the average amount of water supplied and consumed per person is 144 liters, which is a lot. But how much water do we really consume every day? Water is our daily, what is our daily water usage? Our water consumption is not only calculated by what we use domestic consumption, but also by the products that we use. The water used for production of items we use every day, such as cotton, paper, our clothes, amount to 167 liters daily. More than doubling our domestic water usage. The water consumed by products, our food, plays an even greater part in our consumption. It amounts to 3,496 liters per day, per person, which is 25 times domestic water usage. This invisible water that we consume without knowing is called virtual water in the <coughs> industry. Let me give you a few examples. One piece of paper requires 10 liters of water. One kilogram of flour for our bread, 1,000 liters of water. One kilogram of beef or steak, which we enjoy, 15,400 liters. I love chocolate. One <coughs> kilogram of chocolate requires 24,000 liters of water. Agriculture alone can consume 75 to 90% of a region's available water supply. According to the World Health Organization, 80% of all diseases in the developing world are water-related. By 2025, the United Nations estimates that 30% of the world population residing in 50 countries will face water shortages. Water is very precious, and if not clean, it can be very dangerous. It can be deadly. We often take water for granted, wasting it and polluting it. By simply becoming aware of the amount of water we use, we should motivate us to consider our actions and influence our decisions to conserve and to protect the natural resources we have. The price of bottled, bottle of drinking water ranges between 20 euro cents and two euros per liter, depending on where in the world you are. But think about what that means in terms of your consumption. If we calculate all the water we consume per day as 4,000 liters, that translates into huge numbers. In many places, domestic water tariffs are reaching five euros per cubic meters, such as here in Malta, which includes the water we use every day, including water our gardens. If we consider the total water we are indirectly consuming, this translates in 20 euros per day, or 7,300 euros per year per person. It is real, a little reality check. It is an immense gift we actually receive every year. We need to work together to conserve the fresh water we have and use it most efficiently way possible. If we need only five liters of drinking water per day with the highest standards, but all other water we consume directly or indirectly can be offset by each one of us by simply collecting water from precipitation and using it rather than simply letting it run off, as our friend Max Alou has already mentioned. For an average household, this can be as much as 500 liters per day. What is the point I'm trying to make? We need to become aware on how we are consuming because as water becomes scarcer, it will affect its costs and it will have an influence, inflationary effect on all things we need to live. We will experience it in the same way we have seen inflation surge to the increase in energy costs. Today we have gathered in this honorable house of parliament with many prominent persons, decision makers and influencers. My plea to you is to consider that water, food and energy security are of national importance. If you go as far, I would go as far to say that a sovereign nation that cannot supply its people with sufficient water 
food and energy on its own is in danger of losing that very sovereignty. Recently, we have seen what it means to be dependent on energy imports, but its lack of supply or simple logistical problems. I do believe- Your Highness, please conclude. If I may, I'm using up my wife's couple ah. of minutes. So very, very, so give me a <laughs> That's an intelligent more. reply, thank you. I should have mentioned this at the beginning. I do believe that with a concerted effort, each and every country can achieve a basic level of self-sufficiency. In water, food, and energy, it may take some extraordinary efforts to achieve it, but it must be a mandate of every government to give its people, its population, this security. This also translates down to each and every one of us. If we start focusing on this mandate, it will have a dramatic influence on the decisions that we make today and in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I didn't know that. I would have <laughs> obviously added your time together. But now I call Dr. Noel Buttigieg, Director, Taste History Limited Heritage Malta. Dr. Buttigieg. Mr. Chairman, grazie. Uh, Honorable Minister, Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, Honorable Members of Parliament, distinguished guests. Water has been a perpetual commanding vector of human activity throughout Malta's checkered past. A cursory look at our hosting city, Valletta, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Europe's 2018 City of Culture, a 16th century grid planned urban settlement built by gentlemen for gentlemen. These accolades know their origin to discovery of a natural spring. The Knights believed the source could sustain the fortified city for at least a two year siege. Yet, few recall how, within three decades, the Knights of St. John contemplated whether to abandon Valletta due to the persistent shortage of water supplies. As an island within an island, Valletta's water supply was the Achilles heel of this grandois scheme. Even though every building had to have rainwater storage facilities, Difficult climatic conditions and the stark dependency of transferring water-filled barrels on barges from Marsa convincingly questioned the order's presence in Valletta. The tipping point was 1614, when through the genius of the Bologna architect Bontadino de Bontadini, groundwater was transferred from the northern part of the island to Valletta. This unprecedented hydrological project extended Valletta's lifeline for at least another two centuries. Valletta's vignette is symptomatic of the problematic relationship between islands and water resources. Here one could easily discern symptoms that could throw the system into an imbalanced state. Natural disasters have a high impact, affecting infrastructure, the natural and physical environment, including water reserves. Limited physical space and population increase, including tourism, put a strain on natural and man-made water reserves. Problematic water infrastructure and water variability continue to accentuate water stress conditions. Energy efficiency still dominates the agenda of high stakes meetings. Water had to wait until 2023 to regain official front burner status for the United Nations. Nevertheless, water wars are increasingly becoming a reality, and water quality and quantity must start to dominate the future metrics of sustainability. Undoubtedly, one should praise the several adaptation and mitigation actions recently unfolding within the Maltese waterscape. And yet Malta still considered a water-stressed country, a perplexing statistic for the Maltese since water always flows from their taps. We have grown so distant from our food sources that there is little or no consideration for the precariousness of Malta's food sources, especially the significance of water for our agricultural sector. Let's not be anesthetized by our stories of success. Climate change is more than an environmental issue. It is a developmental problem. So we must monitor 
our accomplishments and adapt to the changes. Let's explore further regenerative and restorative infrastructure. Nevertheless, we must do more than just minimizing today's challenges. While we are investing heavily to repair and restore current infrastructure, we need another Bontadini to explore opportunities for abundance. Similar to the aqueduct, some of our technologies are becoming quickly redundant, sometimes even creating negative, food, sorry, negative feedback loops, especially those affecting climate change. Are our leaders as courageous as Grandmaster Alof Dawinyakor when still hired Bontadini, even though his advisors thought otherwise? Could it be that Bontadini's murder happened at the hand of a jealous competitor who had little faith in changing restorative approaches into technology that permits water abundance? We have several Bontadinis that could propel islands into water abundance. We need to seek them out and support their projects. In the case of Malta, this gathering could potentially further inform Malta's national water policy, including specific attention to water resources that could further facilitate the growth of our agricultural sector. Leave no one behind, especially islands. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Noel Butejic. I call now Mr. Joseph Vella, Chief Officer, Operations and Project Malta Food Agency. Mr. Chairman, Honorary Minister, Honorary Parliamentary Secretary, Honorary Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests. Today we gather to discuss the importance of World Food Day, which is celebrated every day on October 16th. This day is about promoting awareness of hunger and food waste worldwide. This year's theme is Water is Life, Water is Food. Food waste and water are intrinsically linked, primarily because producing food requires a significant amount of water. And when food is wasted, so is the water used to produce it. However, we must remember that the World Food Day must be celebrated every day. Why? Because every day there are people suffering from hunger worldwide, amounting more than 800 million, according to the FAO reports. Every day there are parents who, not have, who do not have the means to feed their children. And every day there are children who go to school without lunch. The paradox is that every day there are households, restaurants, and industries disposing of vast quantities of excess food. The magnitude is that on average, one third of all the food produced for human consumption is wasted. We produce enough food globally to feed every single person. This stark, contract, stark contrast of one side massive food wastage and the other side people suffering from hunger is unacceptable. In Malta, the situation is relatively better than in many other countries. However, the country is heavily dependent on food imports, which makes it vulnerable to supply chain disruptions and price fluctuations. The Malta Food Agency is actively working to address these challenges and has already taken several initiatives. These include the promotion and marketing of local food production, the supporting of sustain sustainable agricultural practices by operating the main fruit, vegetables, and fish markets to the highest standards, the identification of alternative markets from where the local produce can be sold, sold to avoid waste and by applying digitalization across all the sectors. The markets are the main source of fruit, vegetables, and fish for the local community. Caritas, in a recent report, singled out one of the markets the farmer's market, as the most affordable location to purchase fruit and vegetables. In parallel, the agency also works, works closely, closely with policymakers to compile and influence policies that contribute towards solutions to achieve food availability, ensure food security, and enhance local food production sustainability. 
In 2023, the, the agency also embarked on a pilot project with the fruit and vegetable market to manage waste. All unsold produce that is declared as waste is collected and reconciled. The produce that is still good for consumption is distributed free to food banks and other voluntary organizations, whilst the remaining produce is collected and is recycled to form compost. This compost is then distributed free to the farmers. It is the intention of the agency to further expand this project to reaching beneficiaries and benefactors using digitalization. Addressing food waste requires both systematic changes at higher levels and grassroots efforts at the individual and community levels. As citizens, our habits, purchasing decisions, and advocacy can contribute significantly to reducing food waste and its associated impacts. This is our moral responsibility. As Pope Francis stated, food waste is like stealing from the table of those who are poor and hungry. And hence, we all need to do our part. In conclusion, we must work together towards combating food waste and ensure that the World Food Day is celebrated every day. Let us all remember that there is food for everyone, but not enough food for our greed. Let's leave no one behind. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I call now Dr. Giuseppe Marsalo, Deputy Director of Coldiretti Sicilia. Honorable <clears throat> Presidente della Camera, Honorable Ministro, Onorevole segretario par parlamentare, onorevoli membri della Camera, ufficiale del Malta Food Agents, distinti delegati, noi vi ringraziamo per darci l'opportunità oggi di essere qui e di ascoltarvi e soprattutto cercheremo di dare anche noi un nostro piccolo contributo. Io purtroppo farò l'intervento in italiano anche perché vi garantisco che il mio inglese sarebbe ancora più incomprensibile, quindi spero che, che mi capiate. L'acqua è un elemento essenziale per la vita e quindi una risorsa preziosa per la produzione di cibo. Questo è un motivo molto importante per usarla e usarla con metodo scrupoloso. Quindi da ciò si deduce che l'acqua è un bene comune. Questo significa che dovrebbe essere accessibile a tutti e senza nessun tipo di discriminazione. È fondamentale proteggere e cessire questa risorsa in modo sostenibile per garantire la disponibilità a tutti sia per le necessità umane e quindi dell'ecosistema e sia anche per le necessità domestiche. Se a tutto questo aggiungiamo gli effetti del cambiamento climatico con la riduzione delle precipitazioni e soprattutto con una distribuzione caratterizzata da eventi eccezionali, ci rendiamo conto di come sempre è più importante gestire bene la risorsa idrica. Diciamo che l'acqua è un diritto fondamentale. L'acqua potabile, l'accesso all'igiene sono diritti umani fondamentali riconosciuti dalle Nazioni Unite. Tutti gli individui hanno diritto ad accedere a un'adeguata quantità di acqua pulita, sicura, per soddisfare le proprie esigenze di base. Oggi abbiamo anche sentito qui da altri relatori il costo del non poter accedere all'acqua per soddisfare le esigenze di base. L'acqua è anche una responsabilità collettiva. La gestione sostenibile dell'acqua è una responsabilità che deve coinvolgere tutti, organizzazioni internazionali, politica, comunità locale e soprattutto gli individui. È necessario adottare politiche e pratiche che promuovano l'uso efficiente dell'acqua, la conservazione delle risorse idriche e la protezione degli ecosistemi acquatici. Inoltre è importante educare le persone sul valore dell'acqua e promuovere comportamenti responsabili per ridurre lo spreco e l'inquinamento. Ma soprattutto, proprio perché per il mondo che Coldiretti rappresenta, dobbiamo prendere atto che l'acqua svolge un ruolo fondamentale nella produzione di cibo. 
Senza di essa sarebbe impossibile coltivare e levare animali per la produzione di cibo e soprattutto di cibo sano. Ovviamente anche la produzione agricola gioca un ruolo fondamentale, oggi l'abbiamo sentito. Bisogna ricorrere a sistemi irrigui efficienti, limitare gli sprechi ed è importante notare che la quantità di acqua utilizzata per la produzione di cibo può variare notevolmente a secondo del tipo di cultura, del sistema di allevamento o dei processi che si utilizzano. Alcuni comportamenti agricoli, come l'irrigazione inefficiente o gli allevamenti intensivi, possono comportare un uso eccessivo e inadeguato della risorsa, portando a problemi di scarsità o anche e soprattutto a problemi di inquinamento delle falde. Proprio per queste ragioni bisogna trovare sistemi produttivi innovativi e che razionalizzino l'uso dell'acqua. Tecniche di coltivazione che migliorino la ritenzione idrica nel suolo. Inoltre è importante promuovere la consapevolezza e l'educazione sugli impatti dell'acqua nella produzione di cibo, incoraggiando le persone a fare scelte alimentari sostenibili e a ridurre lo spreco di cibo. Occorre maggiore sinergia tra chi deve accumulare e gestire la risorsa e chi la deve utilizzare per produrre cibo. E per questo un ruolo fondamentale lo giocano i consumatori, e consumatori lo siamo tutti, perché il consumatore ha il grande potere di indirizzare la politica e la produzione, scegliendo cibi che siano prodotti con metodi sostenibili. Concludo dicendo che attraverso la responsabilità e l'impegno collettivo possiamo preservare questa risorsa preziosa soprattutto per le generazioni future. Grazie. I now call Dr. Marta Sportelli, Chief Executive Officer, Malta Chamber of Commerce, Enterprise and Industry. Marta. Good morning, everyone. Water is life, water is food, leave no one behind. We believe that this statement could not have been better put. Undoubtedly, water is essential to all forms of life on Earth. It is essential for human survival, for animals and plants. It affects agriculture, food production, energy, sanitation, and ultimately the overall balance of life ecosystems. The fundamentals of the statement. Let's start off with life. Humans can only survive a few days without water. It is essential for drinking, for cooking, and for sanitation. Adequate clean water intake is also necessary for our body functions from digestion to actual temperature regulation. Food. Water is intrinsically tied to food security. It is needed for irrigation of agricultural produce, and there are also the water ecosystems that provide seafood. Leave no one behind. To achieve this goal, we need to address the physical infrastructure of water provision, as well as the social, economic, and political systems that determine who gets access to clean and safe water, when and how. Water scarcity and degradation have been a reality for centuries, and international water management is crucial. Malta, like other countries, is facing an increasing water demand due to climate change and limited freshwater supply. But every country needs to do its bit. Last month, the Malta Chamber of Commerce, Enterprise and Industry, the entity that I am representing, published its pre-budget document 2024 for government evaluation. An entire section in our pre-budget 2024 document is dedicated exclusively to water. We have highlighted the fact that groundwater extraction is causing aquifer depletion, which in turn affects soil productivity, biodiversity, ecosystems and food security. Some of our proposals focus on, first of all, the need to map out Malta's industrial production processes to identify resource flows and ensure better water management. 
The second point is on incentivizing rainwater harvesting in both businesses and household. We need to move to the mandatory implementation of cisterns in new buildings and better subsidized rates for renovation. We are also insisting that schemes should target the storage and use of rainwater in industrial estates. Schemes should target as well the treatment and reuse of grey water in the hotel industry and other industries. We are also advocating in favour of more investments in technology that improve irrigation efficiency in agriculture, public as well as private landscaping. We are also insisting on rain harvesting from domestic structures for use as secondary water, as well as the reduction of water use through overall consumer behavioural changes. Last but not least, turning our public spaces and roundabouts into biodiversity hotspots that require minimal care and watering. This would save human resources, reduce water use, and increase pollination. To conclude, we live in a decisive decade where our ambitions, choices, and actions will steer our planet's trajectory until the end of the 21st century and beyond. So let's make sure that we are remembered in history as being catalysts in ensuring a sustainable and equitable future for our future generations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Being also an XMP, you know how to keep your time limit. Thank you very much for that, Marta Sportelli. Ms. Sonia Samut, lecturer, University of Malta and Ambassador for Organic and Sustainable Food. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Minister, Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, Honorable Members of Parliament, distinguished guests, Your Excellencies and colleagues. The occasion of World Food Day brings back memories of a very significant chapter in my life. It takes me back to the year 2021, when I was planning the event for this day for the first time since the Ministry had been assigned responsibility for food, while personally going through an extremely difficult time. It was a process of great learning and rapid growth. On the outside, it marked the start of a national process of dialogue and engagement around food and its centrality in our lives. For me, it ignited the motivation to invest as much effort as possible to bring about positive change in the food ecosystem. This year's theme, Water is Food, Water is Life, Leave No One Behind, is very fitting. As a scientist, it reminds me that without water and without food, we cannot survive, and that our struggle to find the right type of food in the right type of environment has shaped many of our, of our evolutionary adaptations. It also reminds me how in nature everything is connected and part of an organic ecosystem. And although we joke that water is in fact a molecule and not an element, it is prized as the most important element in the system that sustains life. In my mission to promote organic farming, I attach myself to basic principles. It is all about producing food with respect and responsibility, a respect for the environment and a special care for the soil, the water and the biodiversity, as well as a responsibility to deliver food of a certain standards to consumers. I also rely on the evidence to emphasize that the path to sustainability starts with financial viability. If an activity is financially sustainable, it is guaranteed to bring immediate effect, benefits sorry, to the producer and his family on a social level. And it will then make sense for them to take care of the environment that sustains their wealth. This is all part of our commitment to ensure food security and leave no one behind today, let no one fall behind tomorrow. I also insist that when it comes to food, sustainability is all about the system behind it. Food is perishable, but the system that sustains it can be made to last. When I think about sustainable food systems, I think about the three business partners who have joined forces and expertise to set up a wonderful aquaponic system that is delivering food that is fresh, local, and free from pesticides. I think about the brilliant chef and owner of a Michelin star restaurant who gets terribly upset 
if someone in their kitchen wastes any of our delicious local tomato because he appreciates the labor and equally importantly, the water that has gone into making it. I think about the clever farmer who manages a four hectare vineyard who is careful about letting some grass grow at one end of the row of trees so that it may serve as an indicator of the water content of the soil and as a guide for irrigation during the dry summer months. As Maltese, being resourceful and resilient is part and parcel of our nature and a result of living in a harsh environment. And we can choose to use these traits to build better systems for food security and sustainability. Today I look around me and I see influencers, people who can make a difference through their decisions, the systems they put in place and the relationships with others. This is why I want to take this opportunity, the first for me to be present in this room, to invite you to bring about the change we need for people to be empowered to choose sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Samut. I invite now Mr. Javier Cuertero de Fres, Deputy Manager of the Regional Innovation Scheme at EIT Food South, European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Parliament, Parliamentary Secretary, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests. First, I wanted to thank Malta Food Agency for the organization and invitation to this event. I am here today representing EIT Food, an innovation community dedicated to transform the agri-food system, making it more sustainable, healthier, and trustworthy. EIT Food brings together partners from academia, industry and startups to address the most pressing global challenges in the agri-food sector, particularly those faced by the southern European countries. Today, like many, well, like all of you have done, I will address some of the most urgent matters in our region, climate change and water scarcity, because we can no longer consider these issues food threats. In May 2023, the World Meteorological Organi Organization publish a new climate update warning that we are facing a 66% chance, 66 chance of global temperatures temporarily exceeding the Paris Agreement 1.5 degrees threshold in the next five years. Every corner of the globe is experiencing change now, from unpredictable weather patterns, extreme climate events and seasonal shifts to increased health risks, rising food insecurity and rapid biodiversity loss. We need to act and we need to act quickly. In terms of water usage, agriculture is by far the sector exerting the highest pressure on freshwater resources overall, responsible for nearly 59% of total water use in Europe. Although we also need to consider other factors, it's clear that a significant impact can be made by focusing on the agri-food sector. We must address these challenges with a multifaceted approach, involving government policies, technology, technological innovation and sustainable practices and always through the international cooperation. The European Commission, along with the knowledge innovation communities, is working with EU countries to find innovative solutions for water scarcity and build capability to individuals and businesses to promote a better use of these precious resources. It is here that organizations like EIT Food come into play. EIT Food serves as a beacon of hope and innovation, contributing to the resolution of the coming challenges. We work to develop new technologies improved irrigation management, drought resistant crops and water recycling in factories that could save up to 40% in the agricultural and industrial sectors. And we do it in collaboration with local allies such as MAGFI, Big Bridge, MCAST and ASUMI here in Malta. Because we are sure that agriculture can be not only sustainable but part of the solution. We are pushing for a transition to regenerative agriculture as part of the change in the food system. This shift could go hand in hand with a reduction of the loss of natural landscapes and increasing biodiversity, support to local, local, local circular food systems and dietary shift and the implementation of sustainable food packaging solutions. In the year 2022 alone, our endeavors made a profound impact. We supported over 260 startups through initiatives like test farms and water scarcity programs. Since our inception in 2018, startups participating, participating in our, program, our programs have attracted over 
24 million euros from investors catapulting their projects to the next level. Moreover, we've engaged with over 4,000 particip participants in events and workshops led by EIT Food South and participated in many as the one we find ourselves today. These achievements exemplify our dedication to creating a more dependable, health conscious and environmentally sustainable agri food industry. In conclusion, on this World Food Day, let us reaffirm our commitment to tackling the agri food challenges in Southern Europe. EIT Food, in partnerships with governments, academia, industry and startups, stand ready to lead the way toward a more sustainable, secure and prosperous future for our region and the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Joachim James Kalea, Principal and CEO of the Malta College of Art, Science and Technology. Good morning, Honourable Deputy Speaker, Honourable Minister, Honourable Members of Parliament, dear colleagues, distinguished guests. Today I have the privilege of addressing you on a topic of paramount importance to our own existence as well as our civilization. MCOST, at least for the non-Maltese in the room, is the Malta College of Art, Science and Technology. We are dedicated to enhancing Malta's food ecosystem, tackling its challenges head on and championing with our many learners at the college innovation in the realm of food. This drive is marked by determination, partnerships in several projects, and a profound understanding of the pivotal role food plays in everyone's lives. Today's generations must continue to shoulder the responsibility to educate young generations on managing food production and distribution. Research has constantly shown that the world produces enough food to feed all its almost 8 billion people, yet more than 10% of the population goes hungry every day. And since 2020, after years of progress towards zero hunger, member numbers once again are on the increase. Over the years, MCOS has distinguished itself by providing high quality education and training across various disciplines. However, in the past two years, we have embarked on a dedicated mission to foster food innovation. This initiative is made possible through our strategic partnership with EIT Food, a consortium of leading organizations in the European food sector, and our close collaboration with the Malta Food Agency. Our partnership with EIT Food has brought to the forefront the importance of innovation in the food industry, not just for economic growth, but also for the sustainability of our food system. Together with EIT Food, we have initiated various programs aimed at addressing the pressing issues in our food ecosystem. One of MCOST's proudest achievements is the specialized training programs we offer for food entrepreneurs. These programs equip individuals with the skills and knowledge needed to excel in the dynamic and competitive food industry. MCOST also recognizes the paramount importance of food safety and production in Malta. Through innovative projects, MCOST is actively working to overcome the challenges associated with food safety and sustainable production. Our goal is clear, to ensure that Malta's food supply is not only safe, but also environmentally friendly. Consumer Engagement Labs is another groundbreaking initiative. Informed consumers play a pivotal role in shaping the future of food. Through co-creation online workshops, we invite consumers to have a direct say in the development of healthier and more sustainable food options. This empowers consumers to make informed and responsible choices. In November 2022, as part of the EIT Food Startup Awareness Days, MCOST will be hosting a series of free training events in Malta. This will happen next, next month. 
These events will provide valuable insights and guidance to food startups and entrepreneurs, helping them navigate the challenges of the industry while exploring the opportunities offered by EIT Foods. Our commitment to excellence is further enforced by the adoption of the EIT Food Competency Framework. This framework serves as a blueprint for developing and nurturing the skills and competences needed in the food sector. It ensures that our training programs are not just relevant but also aligned with industry itself. As MCAS moves forward, we are unwavering in our commitment to contributing to EIT Foods' impact goals. These goals encompass creating a healthier, more sustainable food system, fostering innovation, entrepreneurship, and enhancing food system reliance. As we commemorate World Food Day, let us remember that the future of food hinges on innovation, sustainability, education, and collaboration. MCAST finally takes pride in being an integral part of this transformative journey. We look forward and ahead with eagerness and determination to continue our efforts to shape Malta's future ecosystem for the better and to inspire a brighter, more sustainable future for all. But talking needs walking and let us avoid what once Ian Thomas has said, that I am not the person you left behind anymore. There is no one else here to miss. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kalea. I understand that we have another Italian speaker. And tonight you remind me of the Malta Italy game. I hope it will be a good game for both of us. Dr. Tindaro Germanelli, Sicilian Regional President of CNA Professioni, La Confederazione Nazionale dell'Artigianato e della Piccola e Media Impresa. Onorevole Presidente della Camera, Onorevole Ministro, Onorevole Segretario Parlamentare, Onorevoli Membri della Camera, Ufficiale della Malta Food Agency, Distinti Delegati, Signore e Signori. Desidero porgere un deferente saluto alle Signorie vostre ed un sentito ringraziamento personale e dal nome della Confederazione Nazionale dell'Artigianato della Sicilia per l'invito che ci è stato formulato. Siamo ben lieti di prendere parte a questa sessione plenaria del Parlamento maltese che vede qui riunite partner strategici e stakeholder del settore per discutere in occasione della giornata mondiale dell'alimentazione istituita dalla FAO e nello specifico dibattere sul tema l'acqua e vita, l'acqua e cibo, non lasciare indietro nessuno. Siamo dunque onorati di consegnare a Codesta Onorevole Assise le seguenti riflessioni e considerazioni. La globalizzazione fenomeno economico mondiale ha avuto e continua ad avere effetti positivi e negativi. Indubbiamente tra gli effetti positivi è da menzionare la maggiore attenzione verso la situazione dei Paesi emergenti, con una sempre più crescente mole di aiuti affinché siano migliorate le condizioni di vita delle loro popolazioni. La competizione globale ha incoraggiato e incoraggia la creatività. L'innovazione svolge una funzione di controllo dei prezzi, delle materie prime e dei servizi. La concorrenza ha alimentato certamente i vantaggi per i consumatori finali, ma purtroppo non per tutti i consumatori finali. Benché la situazione sia migliorata in molti Paesi, nel mondo sono ancora numerose le persone che pariscono la fame o soffrono di malnutrizione. A livello mondiale la denutrizione colpisce quasi 800 milioni di persone, in particolare donne e bambini. Sono molteplici le cause generatrici della fame del mondo e tra di esse la mancanza di investimenti nel settore dell'agricoltura, le condizioni climatiche, le guerre e i conflitti, la instabilità dei mercati, lo spreco di cibo, la carenza di acqua. Relativamente allo spreco di cibo va rilevato che un terzo di tutto il cibo prodotto a livello mondiale, circa 1,3 miliardi di tonnellate, non viene consumato. Questo spreco di cibo è una mancata opportunità per combattere il problema della denutrizione in un mondo dove una persona su otto soffre di fame cronica. L'acqua è un bene di fondamentale importanza sia per l'uomo che per il pianeta, ma ancora oggi due miliardi di persone non hanno accesso all'acqua pulita essenziale per coltivare il cibo e per prevenire la diffusione delle malattie. 
Per questo buona parte del nostro impegno nella lotta alla fame si deve concentrare su fornire accesso all'acqua potabile e ai servizi sanitari ed igienici alle popolazioni in difficoltà. Le conseguenze del surriscaldamento globale colpiscono milioni di contadine e piccoli allevatori che vedono morire il loro bestiame e diminuire il raccolto. Senza il cibo prodotto e senza un'entrata fissa, queste persone sono soggette a rischio malnutrizione. La mancanza di piogge e l'impossibilità di accedere a fonti di acqua pulita li costringe quindi a utilizzare sia per le proprie attività che per se stesse acqua sporca, come quella di laghi e fiumi, spesso contaminata da batteri, parassiti e virus che causano malattie che si rilevano mortali. La stretta correlazione quindi del trinomio acqua, agricoltura e cibo ci sembra evidente. Non può esistere agricoltura senza acqua, così come non può esistere cibo senza agricoltura. Nel settembre 2015 193 Paesi, membri delle Nazioni Unite, siglando l'Agenda 2030, si sono impegnati con il secondo degli obiettivi di sviluppo sostenibile SDGS a raggiungere il livello di fama zero nel mondo. Nonostante questo impegno solenne e malgrado siano trascorsi abbondantemente otto anni, la fame nel mondo è ancora una triste e inspiegabile realtà. Diventa dunque comprensibile domandarsi perché c'è ancora la fame nel mondo e come si giustifica tale fenomeno anche alla luce dello spreco alimentare prima richiamato di dimensione così elevata? Ciò diventa veramente incomprensibile se è vero come è vero che tra le principali cause della fame nel mondo c'è la carenza di cibo sano e a prezzo accessibile. In conclusione, occorre che ognuno faccia la propria parte per sostenere questa guerra contro la fame. Noi della CNA facciamo quello che possiamo ed oggi rinnoviamo il nostro impegno a collaborare con lo Stato di Malta e le sue organizzazioni, la Malta Food Agency per prima, per trovare insieme soluzioni di buona produzione e ottimi scambi che siano rispettosi del lavoro delle persone, della salute dei cittadini e della sostenibilità del pianeta. Grazie per l'attenzione. Grazie. I invite now Mr. Malcolm Borch. President Ada Bdewa Ativi. Malcolm. Thank you very much. Such a pleasure to, um, to be with you all today to discuss food, to discuss water. Because is there anything more crucial, more essential to the working of our civilization than our daily nourishment? But notwithstanding the centrality of food to our society, we can't get enough of pushing the sector around of expecting this, this and that. We want food that tastes good, and we want our food to be safe, and we want to use less pesticides and fertilizers to grow our food, and we want to have more birds and butterflies in our fields, and we expect fields to capture carbon, and we don't want any GMOs, and we want to ensure that the countries we get our food from are taking care of their workers and environment, and we want to take care of our family farms, and we want to maintain our rural landscape, and we want to use fields to build, and we want farm workers to earn a decent living, and we don't want anyone to go to bed hungry, and we want to use our fields to grow fuel and other materials for, for our bio-based economy, and we want better welfare for our farm animals, and we want more food diversity and produce out of season, and we want to feed a growing population, and we want prices to be affordable, and we have to grow in increasingly harsh climates, and the list goes on. And then there is the farmer and the fisher. On his farm, on her vessel, tending the land, the animals, the sea. Notwithstanding the world's pulls and pushes, needs and desires, they are the ones that stand still, for their hands are the sacred interface between humanity and planet, between civilization and nature. Farmers are, are our planet's custodians, trusting them with resources to transform into food. From time immemorial, farmers have always sought to find ways to transfer water from source to crop, digging channels, diverting rivers, drilling holes. The importance of water as a crucial resource to grow food has been central to the growing of the planet's food supply. Honing in on the local scenario and considering the local context, I would like to reiterate three important issues related to the use of water for the growing of food. First, accessibility. How can genuine farmers grow food without water? 
Let's break this borehole taboo. Genuine farmers should be allowed to drill new boreholes to grow food. We're sacrificing the innovation and the expansion of farmers because of this ridiculous borehole drilling moratorium situation. Fairness. The filtered sewage water, also called new water, should be distributed to those producing food for the nation. It is unfair that these genuine farmers have to, have to bow their heads and accept that such resource, resource must be shared with those wanting water for non-productive purposes. The yardstick of success should be food produced per drop provided, not number of people using the new water system. <laughs> Efficiency. Farmers should be guided on best practices to use water more efficiently. They need to see this happening through demonstration sites. They need to be convinced that any technology or system proposed works. It's not fair to expect them to take an operational risk without guidance or support. With so much expectations of the agricultural sector, let's provide solutions to the people that need to make this happen. Let's put the farmer at the center of our water policies and make sure they have the tools and resources to continue feeding the world. Thank you. Grazie, Malcolm Borch. Instead, then, is Mr. Daniel Schembri, Chief Executive Officer, Cooperative Malta. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Minister, Honorable Mayor Parliamentary Members, uh, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, good morning. It's an honor, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I have one very short point. We've been mentioning food and water. We all must be starving now. So they, we can't say that there is one solution to food scarcity. Um, Cooperative might have been doing a lot of research of how food can be secured in communities and the whole lot. Um, but we, we learned about that there are, where there is success, there were these three elements. And the three elements are cooperation, and I must say that with Malta, the Malta Food Agency, Cooperativa Malta, has good cooperation, even though we're autonomous, non-government non organization. But there are also two other main elements, good governance, okay, good governance, and another keyword, which I like everyone to remember, citizen-owned, citizen-owned enterprises. In Belgium, in Holland, in, in, in England, we are seeing this rapid interest in finding solutions where food access is secured because you have a combination of people from the enterprise, also people have the knowledge, the know-how, but the access to such opportunities is not given to few, it is an open access. Access to citizens like yourselves, like myself, that can own shares in huge farms. This is a solution that it's not, it's, it is innovative in Malta, but it's not innovative in Europe. So my, just, my, my point here is this, the knowledge exists the two other areas of good governance and citizen-owned enterprises are areas which we need to hit harder on in order to achieve this and make this a reality. Thank you. Grazie, Hafna. Thank you, thank you, Daniel Schembri. We had speeches in English, we had speeches in Italian. Um, hopefully, we'll have one in Maltese. So, I invite Stephen Lilek, Ivan Bartolo, uh, opposition spokesperson for social and affordable accommodation and fight against poverty, which time the discourse the act. Ivan Bartolo. My microphone, Honorevole Ivan Bartolo. Grazie. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank and show gratitude to, the, to this initiative, um, especially to the Malta Food Agency. So sorry for, the, for our foreign guests because I prepared my thoughts in Maltese. Edin itkelmu fu il-jum dinji tal l-ikel. Pero li minnu il-kolke maħna niħdu l-enerġija. Għalikke il-kolke maħna u kol ninħazdu meta nafu li wieħed punt li ta' bil-jum tunellata ta' jikel fil-dinja jintrema. 
Madan Lamont et naħlu koll ammonti ta' ilma ta' art, enerġija u rizorsi kolla meħtija li uzajna biex produġejna anki dan li kell. Għalix b'dan li kell li jintrema irridu naħzbu, irridu koll namlu anke d-dixxerniment illi 3 biljun persuna kull sena tista, iġifiri, tiħu min dan li kell li jintrema. Erba darbit aktar min numru ta' nis madwar id-dinja ta' min isemmi li eti baħti l-ġuħ. Forsi fajizna ta' idulna imma edin fl-oxrin kli ta' uxrin u da li etejt forsi u għa fantasija jonke l-asġej min l-oppozizjoni tritejx ma' diversi familji biex kun tissa anki titkellem dwar dan. Trit tkun fil-qrib ma' dawn il-bnedmin biex bħuċ min uddim f'din l-ola kamra ta' demokrazija f-pajizna inkun nista nitkellem dwar dan bħuċ min uddim. Li kell muħli ma jirreprezentax lilna awġe għalix mid diskorsi li smajt u ma diskorsi favur anki min et jahli, min kontra anke dawk illi mandom xawernes dwar il-ħela ta' li kell għalix li kell muħli jirreprezenta sfidi soċjali, sfidi umanitari. Fuq kollox anke kif semmew anke mistednin barranin, sfidi u koll ambjentali. Għalix kif nafu l-koll il-ħela ta' li kell u għadnub soċjali tibdil fil-klima kif s-semma għabel u għanke ambjentali. Izjiet ma tkun ċara li deja taħna ta' faqar, dwar dak li għamint introduzzjoni dwaru, izjiet tkun effettiva it-fitċija taħna għal dawk il-familji bnu qas ta' rezorsi, izjiet insiru konxi biex naħdmu sa biex li kell ma jinħelix. U nekrit miġdid nirringrazzja li l-Molta Food Agency illi taħmel u kol xol enormi f'dan il-rigward. Grazzi, grazzi tugdni. Jekk ma jkonnix idea ċarati f-muħna u l-fejn irridu naslu, ma jistax iseħ il-kejl serju ta' kif pa jizna jistaj wetta dak li u laħjar għal min baqa l-ura fil-soċjeta taħna. Meta nitkellmu fuq faqar assolut, inkunu edin nitkellmu fuq bnedmin, illi edin jieħxu situazzjoni bnu qasta rezorsi, edin jieħxu kwazi kwazi, speċalment jekk jikunem mitfal fil-nofs, kwazi nofs tanar b-nofs tanar. Dwar bnedmin, illi ma jafuġ fix eda saħħetom, għal iġdawna, ok, jimorru l-food banks, jinandi food bank, xintu għom fil-food banks, botti jitt u preserfs. Nu qas ta' sigurta, min ħabal ma ndom xanke saħf fuq rasom, no ma dit fall jidġru min posta l-liħor, bħu qas ta' jikel il-bot min li ġene fos toħrajn, ma riċin komplisejr biex ma naħli ċħi. U daw numa kondizjonijiet ekonomiċi koroħ li jaddu minnum uħut, min uħutna, anki maltin u għawċin. U 20% tal-popolazzjoni taħna ti iddaħħa l-inqas min mittet, min aċar telerf fil-senaw. Wallura, soġġetivament dwar dawn il-bnedmin li mandum xaċċessa rezorsi ekonomiċi mi jusaf għala aċċettabli fil-soċġeta taħna, irridu natu kasom, irridu nitkelmu fil-simum. Din il-politika titfassal blazlit ta' jidejat kreativi, blazlit ta' jidejat produttivi, liberta politika, ekonomika u soċjali, u li nwassu li kul min baqa l-ura igaw di rrispet li jihin nifsu, u li jħossu daq sħattiħor, li jħossu rrispettat fuq kollox. Persuna min kul ħamsa fil-dinja torqod bil-ġoħ, kul fil-aċija. Persuna min kul erba ma ndisha tċess aħtiġijiet essenziali bħal ma uwa lil ma ta' xorb. Wieħet min kul klita jiex f-situazzjoni tal-waħx, f-livell ta' ħajja umana li ma s-sibx klim biex t-deskrivi dal li nixti inwassa l-għan dal-odu. Malta ta' mel parti min dan il-xenarju, believe me. Il-tendenza l-isfel anki jekxi uħut minna għan ma jħossuġ dal li għetnejt, turi innu għas ta' ritmu fit-taqbida taħna għal-svelop sħi ħuman il-fuqra jissiltu ma' d-desert. U min għaddej tajjeb ma' jafxi fissar d-desert. 
l-adba tal-faqar fil-kassana i l-adba bejn dan id-desert u naħit l-uħra tal-soċieta tana. Il-faqar għandu ħafna uċuħ li jafsu għaltu eġiba u ħana la għawni konkludi għawn. Għalik nappella lilek ministru Anton Refalu. Li jilek segretari parlamentari ħabiba tijej u li l-kulmina uwa ikkonċernat għad diskussjoni jino koll, intu koll, intu koll, intu koll, inti ħafna ħabib tijej, inti ġentlom. Bix it-tella għad diskussjoni il-private members bill li i-prezentajt l-onorevo l-speaker f-mejju li jadda propju f-dan il-parlament fuq il-ħela tali kell. Ministru, ħabib tijej. Ejja nibatu messaċ ta' motorita bejn gvern u oppozizjoni u naħdmu fuq din il-mizura soċjali salaħħar ta' din s-sena. Grazzi, ministru. Grazzi, għafna, onorevo li Ivan Bartol, nasi din s-salilek, onorevo l-segretari parlamentari Alicia Bugeja, għad-diskors tijak. Thank you, Mr. President. I will deliver my speech in English. Also, due to the presence of international guests, ministers, members of parliament, colleagues. Today, I am grateful and honored to be provided with this opportunity where we can bring to light a matter of fundamental importance to our country. An honor to listen from all of you discussing food security, a question that addresses the health and well being of every single individual. Food security was and remains a fundamental right to every citizen. And the focus on water as this year's global team is definitely food for thought. As I had the opportunity to mention in previous sessions in this House of Representatives, water is one of the scarcest resources in our country. The agricultural sector is entirely dependent on immediate access to water and thanks to the efforts of this government through the investment in the new water technology, farmers are increasingly having access to water for irrigation. We must and we will continue investing in this technology to ensure that we leave no farmer behind. Let me now move to another theme linked to water, fisheries and aquacultures. Sectors that play an immensely more important role for our country in ensuring food security. If we consider the most recent statistics provided by the National Statistics Office, we observe on how over the past year, Maltese fishers caught a total of 2,500 tons of fish. It's the highest amount recorded locally over the past four years. But what does all this mean? It means more fish for our families, for our children, and for anyone who visits our hospitable country. It means a better life, a more secure and beneficial source of livelihood for fishers, their communities, and for us as a nation. Mr. President, everyone in here talked about the need for food for people. So they have access to unfettered preferred food. And I believe that for this principle to apply fully, we as a government need to ensure these four points. That food remains accessible to all, that the food available is economically affordable, that locally produced food remains nutritious, and that our current food production distribution and consumption levels are sustainable. Mr. President, these four pillars are not isolated issues that can be addressed separately. In fact, they are challenges that to be addressed require the government to work with producers, the private sector, and the public in general. And these same principles are the four crucial building blocks, I would say, that underpin our government's work. 
If we were to look at the past years, we'll see that the government has invested heavily in these sectors in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic and now during the Ukraine war, the government channeled millions of euro towards the resilience of our food producers. The assistance was not only to help the farmers, the fishers themselves, but to ensure that food production continues. So the extra expenses that the farmers and fishers were enduring due to rise in fuel, the rise in fertilizers costs, they were shouldered by the government such that the products remain affordable for the citizens. Mr. President, on a global note, despite the political and technological advancements we have made as a global community, the fundamental right to food for many is not just words on paper. It is an ongoing battle, a daily obstacle that hinders the physical and intellectual progress of the individual, an obstacle which hinders the social and economic progress of communities and entire nations. This is why this government over the years has worked tirelessly to bring about a radical transformation. A transformation in the way our farmers and fishermen, thanks to the Malta Food Agency, provide food to our consumers. A transformation in research where we continue to seek and explore the most modern and sustainable practices and adapt them for our country. A transformation in our predominant mentality, where these sectors have finally regained their political and economic dignity. Mr. President, despite everything we have accomplished, we cannot stop here. We must not stop here. The obstacles remain, but they can be overcome. And it's only together that we will continue to strengthen food security in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Con now the Honorary Anthony Bezzina, Opposition Spokesperson for Agriculture and Fisheries. The floor is yours. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Minister and Parliamentary Secretary, Honorable Member of Parliament, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the Maltese Parliament and the Malta Food Agency for organizing this conference on the occasion of the World Food Day. Such conferences will generate dialogue in order to raise awareness about the global hunger and food and water security issues around the world. The World Food Day was established by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in 1979, and its main purpose is to serve as a reminder of the importance of food and water as a basic human right and the need to ensure that everybody has access to safe, nutritious and sufficient food. Therefore, it is our duty to continue addressing the ongoing challenges related to food and water security, nutrition and sustainable agricultural, agriculture and fisheries. Malta, being the smallest country in the European Union, faces several challenges due to its limited supply of water and agricultural land, natural constraints and its location in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, thus not accessible by land transport. Moreover, Malta's agriculture is characterized by small and micro farm holdings with fragmented parcels, apart from the fact that our country lacks a substantial natural supply of water to be used for food production. This makes it difficult to achieve the economies of scale and be competitive on the international market. Malta's unique characteristics, limited agricultural land and lack of natural resources makes the country dependent on imports from other countries, notably for raw materials which further increase production costs. Such difficulties were highlighted during the COVID-19 pandemic and the war in Ukraine, which stressed out the importance 
for food security and strategic food autonomy in Malta. Unfortunately, the farming industry in Malta is struggling to survive. Keeping this in mind, it's our duty to ensure the provision of a fair income for our farmers and their families, and at the same time, improve the rural conditions and the related infrastructure, like the provision of water, to achieve sustainable agricultural practices. This must be coupled with the introduction of new technologies and digitalization, as well as farm resilience to ensure continued management of agricultural landscapes and the survival of key farming sectors. Focus must also be put on the reduction of the income gap between agriculture-related activities and other sectors of the economy. In view that such income gap is leading to less farmers cultivating agricultural holdings. The same principle applies to fishermen and the fishing industry. To achieve these goals, more funds must be allocated to stabilize the farmer's income, coupled with support to various farming sectors presently undergoing difficulties, such those related to beef, dairy, sheep, pork, poultry, rabbit, and tomatoes. We must also support the investment in the processing and marketing of agricultural and fishing products, thus increasing, increasing their added value and improving their quality targets, with the specific aim of providing adequate resources to meet future demands. We must also invest more in the production and distribution of new water to our farming community, thus providing peace of mind to our farmers of a continuous water supply. This apart from the collection of all possible rainwater surface runoff for use by the farming community. Malta has an aging farm population, with young farmers facing numerous barriers to start their agricultural activity. To overcome such difficulties as in accessing land and water, obtaining financial assistance and accessing markets, the necessary support must be provided to help young farmers overcome such difficulties and succeed to set up various agricultural businesses. The same applies to young fishermen, who like young farmers face numerous challenges to access the fishing industry. In this regard, the European Union must be more flexible in relation to state aid regulations in view of the alarming increasing average age of all farmers and fishermen in Europe. Finally, I would like to thank all farmers and fishermen for, ded for their dedication and commitment to ensure food security and sustainable agricultural and fisheries to our country and its citizens. I would also like to thank all the participants of this conference for their valuable contribution and support. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Anthony Pezzina. I call now the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Food and Animal Rights, the Honorable Anton Refano. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for giving me the floor. Thanks to the various speakers for their fruitful contribution on the subject of food and water. Before starting, permit me to elicit a quote said by the great Mahatma Gandhi, a person whom so, I so much admire. Quote, way back in 1929, he said, as a searcher for truth, I deem it necessary to find the perfect food for a man to keep body, mind, and soul in a sound condition. I therefore still seek information and guidance for kindred spirits." Unquote. Mr. Chair, the sands of time have passed, but what Gandhi said in 1929 is still valid today, almost 100 years after. Indeed, I honestly believe that Mahatma Gandhi's views about food, health, way of life, and society are contemporary and never senile. This special parliamentary session may do many seem unimportant.
to me, and you all gathered in this highest institution of the land. It is a landmark moment in history, a beacon of hope for a better future and a brighter world, where we and our children want to live in, free from climate change and water and sea pollution. Homo sapiens has supposedly created us as intelligent human beings, well-wishers and doers on this planet Earth. Personally, I have my doubts about this. I think that food is not just tangible, perishable objects that we eat in everyday life. The notion of food goes beyond transborder concepts. I personally believe that the concept of food should be built on the firm foundation, that the concept of food should be built on the firm foundation that food is science. And even I dare, I dare say it's an art. Speakers here today mentioned the era of the Knights of Malta, going back to the times of the chiaroscuro brought about in Malta by the great master Caravaggio and the rebel Mattia Preti. Even then, food was art. Perhaps some of you don't know, but the Knights of Malta actually imported ice to Malta from Sicily to make ice cream. For this reason, World Food Day is a precious opportunity for us to take stock of the progress in creating healthier food systems and the unique occasion to renew our commitment to build food systems that are, our, that are more robust, resilient and respectful. Respectful. This celebration is part of the needed transformation to place food at the heart of the national agenda. This year's theme, Water is Food, Water is Life, Leave No One Behind, sets the frame for a vision to secure a better future for farmers and for consumers. It is a vision that aligns well with our reforms in legislation and in the organizational setup as well as the upcoming national strategy for food security. Our mission is to support the growth of the food and agricultural sectors by ensuring that farmers and business operators have access to the fundamentals, land and property markets, finance and knowledge. Within the sphere of action, protecting agricultural land is pivotal and central. I would like to congratulate the Malta Food Agency for their efforts in organizing the events around this year's World Food Day and adding value to the national dialogue around food systems. Through the implementation of the Bitcalia reforms and through specific projects, the agency plays an instrumental role in steering crop production towards more water efficient systems and in reducing food waste. I am pleased to say that Malta's strategic plan for the common agricultural policy foresees over 30 million euro to support investments in, among others, water storage, recycling, water collections, and treatment. Waste is a spectrum of a nightmare, indeed the phantom of the food chain opera, which we must not only deal with, but we must curb. FAO statistics show that 19% of the world food valued at 400 billion euros is lost on an annual basis to, due to food, food waste. I don't want to take more time to conclude, Mr. Chair. I am proud to be part of a team that is committed to continue doing major reforms in this sector. It's not just a question that we try, that we perhaps can do, but that we will do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the cooperation from each and every one of you. Once again, greetings from Mr. Speaker, Dr. Angelo Farrugia. So now let's gather all these speeches. Let's transcribe them. Let's study them. And then we decide what we can do and what needs to be done. And then we can all take the necessary actions. So now I invite you to take a group photo together as a commemorative group photo. You can all come close to my desk. Thank you very much and good day to one and all. Our planet may be called Earth, but its surface is made up mostly of water. 
Water flows within us and is the driving force that unites all nature. Water is food, prosperity, energy, life. Yet today, too many people go without it, while others take it for granted. Care for water, cultivate a sustainable future. Water is life, water is food.